two. All right. Oh my God! That this is a an emergency broadcast. Please, everybody, this is a na national emergency. This is not a test. This is not a drill. We are under attack. Our rights are under attack. Free speech is under attack. Fair use is under attack. This is a serious message with peace and love. Peace and love. This is not a drill. Our very rights, our right to exist on YouTube is under attack by Ryan Kavanaugh. This is the third lawsuit against me by an elite Hollywood executive merely for exercising my free speech, my right to have an opinion, to simply read articles. He's seeking to destroy me, to deplatform me, to bankrupt me. This is not a drill. Yes, my friends, this is an emergency broadcast of the H3 podcast. <clears throat> and um, I've got a lot to say to here today, so buckle up, guys. As you can see, we've made some modifications to Ryan. I feel he's transcended into his... Um, his final form, let's say. He's taken his human skin off and he's become Satan. The literal devil. The, actual, devil the actual devil. This is a serious moment. Our rights are under attack. The very essence of free speech is under attack, people. This is very serious. Why, why do I have this? We'll get into that. We'll get into everything. All right, I was supposed we were supposed to have a family's reunion today, but we had to. We're delaying families to next week. I'm sorry to everyone who's excited to see my parents, but this is important, and I feel like uh, we need to address this now at the top of the show. Yes, yes. Thank you, thank you for first of all, thank you to everyone who's here who's supporting us. This is very serious, to be honest. Uh, as much as we joke and make, try to make goofs and laughs out of this, it is a extremely serious situation. Uh, we do have sponsors. Thank you to HelloFresh and ExpressVPN. This emergency is brought to you by. Yeah. That was some serious shit. Well, thank you, Elo. <clears throat> And you know what? I want to say thank a huge thank you to our members who continue to support us in the channel. Let's go, members. Come on. You guys make a huge difference around here. Come on. Members get episodes a day early, the pre-recorded, and also BTS. Special BTS every week by AB. Live performance by BTS. That's not true. We don't offer that, Dan. Or do we? Sign Be a member and, and find out. Sign up and find out. Something called BTS. All right. On the real, though, let's talk about this. So Ryan Kavanaugh has filed his third lawsuit against me. We're, we're, we're applauding that. Um, he filed it yesterday. He made a press release. He did all... He's He's gone on record and said all kinds of crazy shit and um i was extremely worried last night i'm not gonna lie because the what's different about this one is that he hired this guy named uh this lawyer named what's his name i have it in here somewhere douche mcgillicuddy i believe is his name douche mcgillicuddy yep but I had a, I guess, somebody erased it. Douche McGillicuddy. Oh, Thomas Clare. So this guy. Oh, I'm sorry, I misspoke. So this guy, Thomas Clare, is one of the country's most. He's like one of these big time lawyers that specializes in defamation. Hmm. And you don't. This is my first rodeo. You don't hire this guy unless you're going to war. This guy's. This is like an $800 per hour lawyer who's like just nice. comes in swigging his cock and just. He's like, I'm here to fuck your life up. Let's go. So it's different in that regard. It feels way more serious and scary. 
but I actually I finally got the complaint this morning and it's all about pond uh, is it is it in here um do we have the new complaint in here you, oh. did you put it you're the only one who has it. i sent it to i emailed it to you guys oh i'll let it right now yeah so it's all about the ponzi scheme which i when i saw it i was like this is weird they're He's mad that I've kept reading this article that was published by Variety. Actually, you guys need to show... Hold on, hold on. You guys need to show... Oh, never mind. That's good. You can't really see the Variety because that's the way they printed it. But Variety made this article, and he's angry that I keep showing this article. And it's like, dude, I'm just reading Variety's article. Like... Yeah. How is that fucking defamation now? Do you know what I'm saying? Free speech is literally under attack. I can't read an article published by Variety. He says the article itself is defamatory. So there, it's like, okay, we'll take that up with Variety. I'll, I'll show yeah. you guys the complaint. Right. Um, but anyway, the thing is, he's been threatening he to hear. Oh, actually, here, yeah, we've got the complaint here. I'll. I'll I haven't actually read it yet because I just got it this morning, but I skimmed it, which I'll show, I'll, I'll skim it for you guys. There's some um, familiar images here. Uh, there seems to be. Oh, shit. It's problem. flipped, bro. Oh, shit. Is this the Triller app or H3 uh, Podcast? I think that's how they sent it over. Yeah. Like they sent the complaint flipped. flipped. Yeah, what the hell? Well, can you flip it in um Yeah, we'll post? we'll we'll flip it in yeah. Vmix. Maybe uh, yeah, upload so it upside awkward. down, I don't know. Man, he got this huge No, I'm looking at it here. It's it, it's it, it, it was published upside down. It's very strange. Well, that's awkward. I can't believe they got this huge high-powered attorney and they're still flipping everything they do. Huh. Yeah, can you unflip it? Okay, there you go. Oh, nice. Yeah, so here you can see Hey, look at this. Here's a tweet I sent, you know, back in July. Every time I think of Ryan Kevin, I think of his business partner alleging he was involved in a Ponzi scheme. It's like, okay, well, yeah, here's the Variety headline. What do you want from me? That's wrong. I, these are not my claims. That's what's so crazy. I'm not claiming that he ran a Ponzi scheme. Variety is claiming that. Well, not even Variety is claiming that. His ex-partner was claiming that, right? Yeah. They're just his reporting ex-partner, on His ex-partner retracted it, which we've made clear. Right. But, like, this is the headline of the article. Still up. <clears throat> it's still on Variety. So, and then he says, I don't know if Jake Paul... Here's another one from July. I don't know if Jake Paul left because of Ryan Kavanaugh specifically, but he definitely thought Showtime was a better opportunity than Triller. So I'm not surprised since the owner, Ryan Kavanaugh, was accused by his ex-partner of running a Ponzi scheme as published by Variety. Got your hat. Again, apparently that's defamation. Um, here's a familiar image. You know, Brian Kavanaugh running a Ponzi scheme as accused by his ex-partner. Here's a here's every <laughs> here's every uh, you know. Uh, every time they really went to great lengths. Apparently, <laughs> huge, huge fans of the podcast. Apparently, <clears throat> you know that shirt looks fire, though. Yeah, it looks good. You know, keeps going. Huge fans of the podcast. Someone's been watching every episode, so we appreciate that. Um, here I am pointing to it. During this exchange, a producer held up this photo in the background. Huh? Oh, yeah. That's you, A.B. <laughs> Hell, yeah. I'm a producer, baby. <laughs> you know. Uh, oh, and then the, the shirt, which this is just what he wrote, Govern Yourself Accordingly. And this, I think, is Andrew Santino. It looks more like Andrew Santino <laughs> than anyone else. So I don't know what that's all about. Again, we never sold this. Scam accused of Ponzi scheme by ex-partner, you know. <laughs> Ponzi scheme. So here they include this on the website that we made. Uh, wow. does, does, does Ryan Kavanaugh look like Harvey Weinstein? 
and here if you read it, it says, Elon Spar signed a complaint under oath alleging that Kavanaugh persuaded him to go to into business under false pretenses. The lawsuit was resolved out of court. This story was covered in June 7th, 2019 Variety article, Ryan Kavanaugh accused by ex-partner running Ponzi scheme. Okay, how's that defamation? Somebody fucking please tell me how reading an article is defamation. Yeah, so they're very, he's very sensitive to this headline. Uh, the, okay, so this is a comment he received, unrelated to me, by the way. I guess um, Ryan Kavanaugh is like a huge uh, Zionist, mm -hmm. whatever that means. Well, I know what it means, you know. Um, I, I don't want to put words in it. I'm pretty sure he's like a huge advocate for like the state of Israel's yes. whatever, you know. But someone said, uh, what was the tweet he said? Because I remember it was something kind of inflammatory. It was kind of like a bad take. Maybe you guys can find it. From him? Yeah. A bad take? You'd have to be more specific. What? Well, look up this tweet and then find out whatever he tweeted. Because they, this person, okay, who is not associated with me, it has two likes. They include in the complaint. Defending a genocidal ethnostate, cringiest thing you've done since allegedly running a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> they even say allegedly. <laughs> they don't even fucking, like... By the way, I didn't leave that comment. I don't know if you guys know that or not. Emerald Eye isn't your uh, your sock puppet? Well, according to Ryan, every so account alt? on the internet is my sock puppet. <laughs> yeah. I'm the puppet master. <laughs> and then I said, when you think of Ryan Kavanaugh, what comes to mind? I'm sorry. Red hair. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, movie producer. Relativity media. Relativity media. Trailer. Like, what the fuck? You know? Pe people say Ponzi. Okay, well. Take it up with them. I didn't, you know, <laughs> exactly. I didn't <laughs> write that. But they, again, now they keep trying to blame me for shit on the subreddit. Ponzi scheme. Upvote this post. So when searching for Ponzi scheme, Ryan Kavanaugh shows up. Again, this is the subreddit. I don't post this shit, bro. This is like one of the main tenets of the internet is that, by the way, and I don't own Reddit either. Wait, Did you, you know that? You sure. don't post that? I read an article yesterday saying you do. Yeah, Ryan's article, which uh, we'll get to. Okay. More comments, more Twitter responses. This one has 100 likes. So you can see, you know, it's hard to recover from a tweet with 100 likes. Somehow this trailer showed up in my feed after some investigation. I came to realize the creator of this even has bankrupted his previous companies. Well, that's true. Has been involved in creating a Ponzi scheme and has an uncanny resemblance to Harvey Weinstein. Well, that person actually apparently forgot to mention that it was retracted. But again, I'm not them, so I can't force them to put in every little fucking disclaimer that you want, you know. Oh, okay. And now he's get, he's getting nasty messages in his unfiltered tw Instagram DMs. Like, do you want do you want me to scroll through my Instagram DMs and show you the death threats I get every day? <laughs> okay, some dude named is I don't actually I'm not trying to dox this guy. I don't know who it is, but like someone someone tweeted him kill yourself in Instagram DM. And he's fucking acting like this ain't 2021, dude. I know you just created an Instagram account like three months ago, but I'm sorry to tell you that. You'd be getting this with or without me. I guess I did something to piss off the Instagram god. Oh, yeah, you did. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm just browsing and looking at the, uh, the images here. They keep showing the same shit. I don't know what that's about. Why am I seeing the same thing twice? They flipped their complaint? Oh, no. So there you have it, okay? Oh, oh, it looks like they did. Oh, they flipped? Oh, it is flipped. Fuck. Yeah, so that's actually breaking news. I wasn't ready to present this today, so I just wanted to kind of show you guys what was in there. And it's actually almost, well, I haven't read it, but it seems entirely about this Ponzi scheme article that Variety wrote <clears throat> that's still up. <clears throat> and it's really interesting that he's so sensitive about this this Variety article, let me pull it up. It's like, it really, it really bothers him, this article. 
Because, like, he says, he's like, look at this. He says, oh, it was immediately retracted. It's like, well, here's the title, you know. There's no fucking correction in the title. Like, Variety didn't think that whatever he said was important enough to amend the title. And by the way, um, he also, we learned, sent a bunch of, of uh, threatening uh, defamation lawsuits to people who reported on this. The Hollywood Reporter article, which we'll read, says that he was on the receiving end of Ryan Kavanaugh th lit lit litigation threats. So this is a litigious man who's used to getting his way in every single regard through privilege, through litigation, through th threats, and sometimes even, you know, well, it is what it is. So here, here's the update. Ryan Kavanaugh. Wait, so there's not even update below. It just says update below. That's all they wrote. So Variety thought that his correction and threats were um, important enough because he says all they say is update below. So you have to go all the way to the end of the article to get his, his statement and update. Okay. Which is, hold on. Where's his, where's his updated statement? Bro, I think you're you're in it. Update here. Yeah, there you go. Kavanaugh and Spar appear to have mended fences. Kavanaugh's rep sent a statement Friday afternoon saying they are satisfactory resolved it. The statement also accused Variety and the Hollywood Reporter of having attempted to smear both Kavanaugh and Spar by quoting from their lawsuits against each other. So this is the delusions that we live in. The next I line is even better. Lawsuits against each other, which they say they submitted to the court by accident. Yeah, whoops. Whoop. That, how the fuck do you submit a lawsuit by accident? Fell out of my hands. I guess when you, when you do so many lawsuits, you just keep track. You lose track of them. Oh, there's too many I'm lawsuits. Su I'm suing every person who left a mean oh. comment on Twitter. Oh, I tripped. And, f and it accidentally slipped into the clerk's <laughs> office. And we accidentally paid the fee to file it. <laughs> oh. My, oh, my credit card and the file. Anyway. So, you, so again, like, he's saying, like, I didn't do my due diligence. Like, this update is not fucking that easy to find. What you see is a fat Ryan Kavanaugh accused by ex-partner of running a Ponzi scheme. Fat, huge fucking title. And then update below. Okay. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's get into the whole thing. <clears throat> I really hope that more people take notice of what's going on here. I'm happy to see that the Hollywood reporter finally covered this story and i think that philly d is covering it today he reached out for comment to me today i'm really really happy that more people are starting to cover this and i hope more people will because what he's doing is nothing short of like scientology level of legal harassment i mean this is his third lawsuit against me because he doesn't like being criticized period he says it's his first lawsuit against you yeah well we'll get into that as well but I hope that more people cover this. I hope that, you know, this gets in front of more eyes and more reporters and more public interest. And I hope that, you know, because this is a this this is a lot of ramifications for for, for free speech and fair use, which I think people keep forgetting because people had so much energy. The people were so passionate about the first lawsuit with Matt Haas. Um, and they, and this is the same thing. He's saying, I cannot watch a clip of theirs, period. That's fair use, guys. If I lose that, it's going to fuck over everyone. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. I was scared last night. I was fucking barely slept. I was so worried, man, because of the super lawyer they've got. And this is the third lawsuit. And it's just, it's like this shit will never end. He is dead set on fucking my life up. But, on, you know, it's like, <clears throat> what can I do? I got to do the right thing. It's the same thing that happened with the first lawsuit. I could have got out of it for $4,000 and ended up fucking over two years of my goddamn life. <laughs> and now here we are again. Now I'm already in like a quarter million. And it's probably going to cost me over a million by the end of this. Assuming I don't 
lose. If I lose, then God knows how much money I'm going to owe them. Right. Don't like to think about that. But I'm doing this because it's the right thing to do. Okay? That's it. That's the bottom line. This is fair use. This is First Amendment. This is fucking it. I'm not giving in to some bully, some media elite who has endless f troughs of cash to throw at harassing and silencing me. I'm not going to do it. It's not happening. I will never back down from you, Ryan. Do you understand you're a bully? And I don't like bullies. And I will never back down from you. I will spend every fucking dollar that I have to. And that's just what it is, bro. I don't like it. Again, I tried to resolve it. I tried to pay him to go away in the beginning. You guys got to remember how this all started because Ryan's trying to pay himself out to be the poor victim. This started, okay, when I found out I was being sued. Uh, by, by the way, Keemstar, once again, apparently a champion of... Um, apparently a champion of fair use, right? And, and free speech. Celebrating that I'm being sued by a huge media company for copyright infringement when I was clearly fairly using it. Okay. So here's the statement. I didn't know I was being sued. I found out from Keemstar. Triller filed legal action on April 23rd in the U.S. District Court against the owners of the H3 podcast website for pi piracy. They say that me, us and dozens of other sites restreamed and profited from as many as hundreds of thousands of users each. So, okay, right out the gate, Ryan's coming at me, like, lying, saying that I restreamed his event, which is a blatant fucking lie. Okay. More than two million illegal streams of the event occurred on Jake Paul. Okay, well, you know, we, we again... Like, I have to restate the facts, because Ryan is trying to spin this shit like crazy. We didn't even react to the event until five days after the event was over. So you exactly tell me how the fuck I took away pay-per-view pay views from you when I didn't even react till five days after the event. In the case of the H3 podcast, they specifically are calling me out. Triller added the site to its legal action after the site owner admitted on his podcast that he pirated and shared. Okay, that's a fucking lie. I said, I personally, as an individual, watched an illegal stream. If you want the 50 bucks, that's fine. But to say that I shared it is a blatant fucking lie. The legal action could result in civil fines up to 150000 per illegal stream as well as potentially $250,000 in criminal fines and up to five years in prison. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And then Keemstar and all of his goons go, Ethan's going to prison! Woo! Going to prison for, for using fair use. Like, these guys don't even know what they're celebrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we love that precedent of, of someone, a YouTuber, going to prison for fair use. Like, they're, they hate me so much that they don't understand what they're actually fucking celebrating. Stupid bitch. If I remember correctly, FaZe Banks corrected Keemstar on their own podcast and was like, you know he's not actually going to jail, right? Like, that's... Thank God. Yeah. That's what I do. I, yeah. yeah, of course. It's like... <sighs> yeah, well, they're, so the fines are calculated at 150000 per instance, so H3 Podcast basically owes us like $10 billion, according to them. <laughs> For every podcast view, it had a million views. So what's... Uh, let's see here. So according to them, what's 150000 times a million? Uh, oh, uh, 150. Yeah. Thousand times one million. Yeah, that would be, uh, 150 billion dollars. Yeah, so they're, <laughs> so, you know, expected damages, 150 billion dollars. Yeah. Jeff Bezos is like, I can't pay this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford to pay this legal, uh, <laughs> I can't. Okay, so right out the gate, you guys have to remember as we go through this. This was a shot across the fucking board. This was a shot heard round the world <laughs> against me, okay? The, uh, the, one of the biggest proponents of fair use, champions of fair use on the internet, a threat of putting me in jail and fining me $150 billion, okay? 
So you guys want to say, if, if Ryan wants to pretend like he's the victim, let's remember how this whole fucking thing started. Okay. <clears throat> and then you have to also consider that I was at the time not wanting to get into another lawsuit. I was handling uh, settlements amicably. I offered them, you know, like, uh, I don't even remember. Ryan claimed in his statement we offered him 50000 I don't remember. It may have been 50000 25000 is what I remember. Whatever. To make this just go away, just say fuck off. They demanded in response when I was being amicable, amicable they demanded a million dollars and a statement. A fucking statement to be read on the podcast. Where's that statement? You guys got to read this. Yeah. So they, they sent me this. Say They said, you have to read this on the podcast. Now you tell me if this is someone acting in good faith. Can you highlight it for me, please? It is. Right here. Thank you. So they say, no, you have to pay us a million bucks and read this statement. Okay? So they say, in light of the foregoing, we hereby reject your client's offer for 25000 and counter-propose settling this matter for 900000 and the agreement to make the following statement. Okay, now you guys listen to this and tell me this, if this is in good faith. We are pleased to announce that we have reached a settlement with Triller Fight Club as a result of us pirating this event. Triller surprisingly has embedded watermark technology, unlike anything we've seen today. Why do I think that Ryan wrote this himself? It's literally written. <laughs> so fucking terribly. And it's, who even talks? Uh, 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 surprisingly, Triller has surprisingly has embedded watermark technology, unlike everything I've ever seen. You and I mean, it's everyone nice. knows that you are an expert on watermark technology, oh, yeah. and so because I'm a pirate, to, right. I know how to dodge watermarks. Right, but you'd never seen anything quite like this before. Anything like this to date? Surprisingly, it's not flipped. The this offer, yeah, no, it's not upside down. I mean, the technology. Surprised that's not in the the response. Flipping, flip, yeah. yeah. And then it goes on. I have to say, we had a million dollars to settle. We had to pay a million dollars to settle in order to avoid 50 million or more in potential liability. We encourage anyone who pirated the event to take Triller's amnesty offer very seriously. Why do, wait, why do, they, they're asking for $900,000 and then the statement they want you to say a million. Yeah, exactly. They're asking me to lie in the fucking <laughs> so statement. Weird. We encourage anyone who pirated the event to take Triller's amnesty offer very seriously and to pay the $50 before what happened to us happens to you. Triller is incredibly serious about this, and we do believe they will find most, if not all, people who pirated. By the way, how's that going for Yeah, you? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure they've really rounded, rounded everybody up in the paddy wagon by now. So do you see how psychotic this is? I make a good faith offer to settle, and they say, no, we need $900,000, and for you to basically read the most insane statement that one could ever fucking read. Me being a fair use champion, a free speech champion, this is not, this is basically them saying, fuck you, we're coming after you, this is spite, and uh, so, so, again, who's the victim here? I have never sued anybody in my life. This is pure aggression from Ryan Kavanaugh. Okay, so I think it's important to remember how we got here before we continue to reading his new statement. And let's not forget Ryan Kavanaugh sent me a threatening fucking DM on Instagram in July. Ethan, I am not sure why you have decided to take upon yourself and show on your show to malign, attack, and slander and defame me. I do not know you. I also don't know why you are spending thousands of dollars to have thousands of dummy accounts post fake statements about me on my Instagram oh my and tens of thousands to have fake app reviews on Triller. It's like, bro, self report. Like, I'm not that, I don't know how much it costs to pay <laughs> bots, but apparently you do. What does that mean? <laughs> 
Uh, Worst yet, you dedicated an entire show of yours reading your own fake reviews. So what? Well, they're not fake reviews, first of oh, all. Oh, your own, as in yeah. you, the ones that you wrote. Yeah, yeah, he's like, you paid all these people to do fake reviews, and then you read them on your show. Yeah, like, not quite. Mm, I don't pay people <laughs> to write reviews, bro. <laughs> I saw a really funny meme on the subreddit where he's like, wait, you guys get paid to do this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe you can pull that up if you see it. I thought it was funny. Yeah, we're not paying anyone. There's no fake reviews, okay? While amusing and slightly annoying at best, I would advise you to stop and mitigate your damages now. Your toy podcast, again, I feel like that statement really reveals what Ryan thinks, is that we're just some stupid little fucking kids he can kick around and spit on because we're not serious business tycoons like him. Your toy podcast seems fun and all, but this is real business with real consequences and you are causing real damage. Okay, well, so are you, bitch. You're fucking... What are you doing? This is a business? Yeah. In America, last I checked, we have a freedom of speech and fair use. Well, this was America. I mean, this is a true, I thought this was America moment. And then he goes on, Clearly you are very unhappy and disturbed. To take it upon yourself to attack someone you don't know with false and misleading information. Especially to spend tens of thousands of dollars on it. But it must stop. Again, like, he's so obsessed with the fact that I'm, I have to be paying people. And that people actually just don't like him or his app. And also, why are you going on to call me unhappy and disturbed? Like, you say I don't know you. Well, you don't know me either, dude. Um, you know what? Uh, you have been warned, and I will not be threatened and maligned and stand by idly. Govern yourself accordingly. So, let's just remember where we are here, okay, and how we got here. This man has threatened and bullied and intimidated me from the very fucking beginning of this. With that press release. You know? <sighs> Here he is. This was kind of like he started tagging me on Instagram. Here's, here's my here's my notifications. I started getting DMs from Ryan Kavanaugh because he kept tagging me. So this is what I, this is how my day started yesterday. Why I sued it, sued Ethan Klein with him tagging me. Now check this out. Look at this little statement at the bottom. H3H3 Productions needs at he tags me. Needs to stop harassing, harming, and attempting to destroy other people's lives. Spreading false and malicious lies. Apparently reading headlines is sp spreading false and malicious lies. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to have to be the one to stop him. I believe within months his channel will be banned from YouTube. So that, is, that tells you everything you need to know. This is an elite Hollywood tycoon who when faced with criticism, has set it upon himself to deplatform me from YouTube. Which is the same kind of shit Matt Haas was saying, by the way. You know, this is the same shit. He continues tagging me, by the way. Um, his article. And then, by the way, it's funny that he's like, oh, you're sharing headlines. Like, he's doing the same fucking thing. I'm not about to sue him, you know. Uh, Ethan Klein, he keeps posting this same headline, like, Ethan Klein accused of racism and homophobia. You know, this is stuff I've addressed, this, I'm, I, I, I honestly, well, this was from two years ago, it was extremely offensive, the things I said. In reflection, I deeply regret those comments, and the people I offended, and, you know, I stand BTS now, I've, I've educated myself, I've listened to the music, I love BTS and the BTS community. And I absolutely fucking regret, I'm horrified and disgusted by the comments I made. And I still, to this day, apologize and stand the BTS community um, and ARMY in general, you know. So, like, if you're trying to parade this in front of me, like, I'm going to be embarrassed or something. I mean, while I deeply regret it, I do hate to, I loathe to see it and to think about it because it's just, it's humiliating. I'm okay. I'm always okay talking about it and facing my 
demons, so to speak, facing my my uh, my fuck ups, right? Because I always think I'm never going to try to hide from things I've said or done. I'll f talk about it as many times as I need to because you know what? People shouldn't say the things I said. And um, if I can talk about it and change the discourse even a little bit by bringing it up and talking about it and facing it head on whenever it comes up, then that's what I'm going to do. I can't hide from it. So, like, you know, but it's like, do you even care about the issues that you're bringing up? Like, why are you using this offensive moment as, like, a cudgel against me do you actually care about the offensive things i said were you offended or are you just using this because you think it's like a tricky little pawn in your game like you obviously don't care about these issues it's just a headline and so i just think it's like disingenuous and very fucking gross of him to just be like oh well look ethan once said something racist and homophobic so uh, not that I care about that stuff at all. I'm just showing, I'm just doing, I'm just trying to show a bad headline about him. Do you know what I mean? Like, doesn't it feel like just weird and sincere when people are like, they bring up stuff like that? It's like, well, you don't even care about that stuff. So why, what do you fucking care? Mm -hmm. Assassination of character. So anyway, he's now, he's now taken upon himself to post <laughs> Head, mean head or well post negative headlines about me and tag me on Instagram you know pretty psychotic um, he also said to the bet so here's here's the other little wrinkle in this this Wikipedia user who says he's Ryan Kavanaugh And I actually believe it is Ryan Kavanaugh for the following reasons. He said, this user said that he was filing a third lawsuit against us next week. That was the first and only time I had heard that. And sure enough, the third lawsuit comes out, which leads me to believe that this user is, in fact, Ryan Kavanaugh. Of course, it's not confirmed, though, just to be clear. He said, um, I have, he said that he's complaining to Wikipedia editors. I have pressed much more recent and copies of the legal actions against H3 for attempting to disseminate these very same falsehoods. If you would like to review them, as well as copies of the legal complaints sent to YouTube, which ultimately resulted in them being banned with two strikes for a week, and now hopefully permanently. Twitch is also reviews, reviewing the same info for a ban. So why this is important is because, once again, it proves that Ryan Kavanaugh is trying to deplatform me for criticizing him. He is sending legal complaints to YouTube to get me striked, to get me banned, permanently banned, and also Twitch for no fucking reason other than to just deplatform me so that if YouTube does suspend or ban me, then I won't have anywhere else to go. Like, Twitch, like, I've not, I've not even broadcast any of this shit on Twitch. He's fully going for the full cancel. Here he says, my page is Ryan Kavanaugh. So, you know what I'm saying? Also, the user is RK, and he's been, the, the user's been editing the Ryan Kavanaugh page a lot, so there's a lot of reasons to believe that this, this person is, is actually Ryan. But again, it's um, unproven, but, you know. So, again, he is not the victim. This is a nonstop, sustained attack on me, my livelihood, and my right to free speech and fair use. From the very inception of this legal battle, when he put out that press release, it was an all-out war on my American rights. My God-given rights as an American citizen. Yeah, so you guys want to read this article finally? Because this article he published is a fucking roller coaster, bro. Yeah, he and then he posted this as a little teaser before. The dark side of social media. You know what I find ironic? Ryan Kavanaugh is the figurehead of Triller. 
the dark side of social media is not like young women uh, unaliving themselves or people, you know, the like how the dark, uh, you know, people getting sucked in, losing their self confidence, becoming obsessed with their online persona. No, that's not the dark side of social media. The dark side of social media is this one guy saying mean stuff about me. Like, how out of touch can you be, bro? That's the dark side of social media? Is Ethan saying mean stuff about me? And this guy's in charge of Triller. He wants to be the new TikTok. And just to show you how in touch this guy is. Like, you think this guy's actually ethical and responsible enough to head? Actually, he is. He'll fit right in with Zuckerberg. and He'll run it about as good as Zuckerberg. What we really need to worry about on social media is peop is this one guy, Ethan. I'm the meat chef. Tomorrow I will be publishing an article that speaks to the harm and damage irresponsible people like H3H Production can cause through social media. Once again, tagging me. It's time for some changes and for someone to put a stop to people who use their social powers to intentionally harm others. How about you using your status and money to fucking try to stomp me out of existence through the legal system? For the first time, I can say I am suing H3H Productions. This boomer ass fuck puts a URL and an Instagram description, which is not clickable. <laughs> and then the final, the cherry on top, of course, is before I read this, is that, okay, so this is fucking. This is when shit, sh this really tells you all you need to know, okay? I p actually, here, let me pull up the Instagram post. It's, it's linked in the doc. I have it highlighted, if that's easier. That'll be faster. So I posted a nice picture of me and my family, my son, on Thanksgiving. Okay? This should tell you everything you need to know about this guy. I posted a nice photo of me and my family on Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Love y'all so much. So thankful for everyone, family, crew, audience. So thankful for all I have. Peace and love. Ryan Kavanaugh goes back to this post, this Thanksgiving post of me with my son. And links the fucking URL, unclickable URL. Bruh. Under the fucking photo. Bruh. Someone said, did you really just comment this under a Thanksgiving family photo? Jesus Christ, dude, you are sad. This motherfucker went to my family photo and linked his URL. Congratulations, Ryan Kavanaugh. You are our showman of the year. Right, I just wanted to remind everybody that this is what he was doing on his Thanksgiving while you were spending time <laughs> with your family, was posting 10-year-old articles about how cool he is and crossing <laughs> out the date. Wait, what is, the, what is this you keep sending? He's, he actually said... So, yeah, someone commented on one of his posts yesterday. Um, I put in the doc, and he responded by saying that you got popular uh, from a podcast where you ate your own poop. I did. Not that I recall. <laughs> I have no memory of that. <laughs> the exchange Wait. is pretty epic here. It's he says, it was really good, and the interview you did really sold it. People come from the H3 pod and think you're a douche when you're just doing your job. They just got to give you a chance. Solid guy. Yeah. Right. Well, we suspected that. Okay, whatever. I'm not getting it. So he says, thank you. Anyone who blindly follows that guy just clearly has a lot of hate in them. And as, Bro, you're the one that came to my family photo on Thanksgiving. And posted the article with my son in it. Has hate in them and has too much time on their hands to listen. Too much time, bro. Don't get me started, bro. <laughs> so this rambling nonsense and troll people. After all, he's a guy who built a podcast on eating his own poop. And making <laughs> racist, Classic. homophobic, and xenophobic comments. Classic episode. Hold the fucking phone. You don't remember that? That was epic when you did that. He's a guy shit live on air. He's a oh, guy man. who built a podcast on eating his own poop. <laughs> That's your thing. 
That's how you, is that that's defamation? How you that's how you know. It sounds a lot like defamation. Unless he has some footage of you eating your own shit on the podcast. That sounds like some defamation. No, no. It's, it's all true. You guys, <laughs> foggy memory or something. I remember I, what happening. I, Does he mean the old H3H3 Productions video? That's the only thing I can think of. But so, yeah. the, the foot soldier that sent me this uh, suggested that maybe he mixed up on After Dark 59 when we were talking about Nick, Ava uh, Nick Akato shitting himself. But how's that? He says he gets to eat it. That yeah, is a stretch. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's got to be the, the old H3 video. But that video is so old, and I'm pretty sure I removed it. I guess they've been trying to do some like recon to try to fake up dirt. It is removed. I, mean, I have it. Maybe the eat the poop. That's from like seven bite? years ago. I made a video with Frank, Filthy Frank, where it was the, there was some challenge going on, and we said, "Oh, wouldn't it be funny if we did a eat your own poop challenge just to show how stupid all these challenges were?" And I had like a melted Snickers that I was pretending was poop from like seven years ago, <laughs> right? Shot in my small apartment, but like to say I built a podcast on eating poop, I'm assuming, but but like it's so weird. He's doing deep research, and that's what he dug up. This is sick. He's a big fan. That's been my theory all along. He's actually a big fan and he's just hurt. Isn't he also a Barbie or was that someone else? A Barbie? The, a Nicki Minaj? Uh, no, yeah. A Barb. A barb. Oh, a Barb. A Barbie? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Stan uh, culture is getting to Ryan Kavanaugh. It's true. <sighs> that's a weird comment. Yeah, someone asked if that's defamation, and he said, no, I believe it's called defecation on himself, smiley face. Oh, <laughs> that's funny, but it also is defamation, because I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. That's defamation. By the way, talk about too much time on your hands. You're arguing with people on Instagram fo uh, followers. I don't even do that. <laughs> and apparently I have a toy podcast with all the time on my hands in the world. No, it's called defecation on himself. What are you talking about? Got him. That's a zinger, Ryan. Good job. I pooped my pants. I'm going to sue you, fucker. You said I eat my own poop. <laughs> yeah, well. Eating <laughs> poop. By the way, so just to clarify here about this, this was, I would say it's unconfirmed, but like, so the user sent it. He, he after tagging me all day, he blocked me, <laughs> which may have removed his comment on my post or he deleted it. Right, because we couldn't find we it. We couldn't find it looking. last night, but the guy who screenshotted it sent it to us, and it does look real, but it's, I guess I should just say it's unconfirmed. Oh, wait, is he talking about, like, my first ever video? See, that's what I was thinking, that he went, I like, really deep on you. Wait, he's really went back to my first Mr. ever video, and he's saying I built my podcast on eating poop. Deepa. Yeah, whatever. I mean, that was the first domino in a way. I guess. I guess, I guess in a chain of events. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say video. I wouldn't say I built my podcast on eating poop. There may, there may have been some intervening events after that, but yeah, I mean. I want to sue him for that just to see their evidence. <laughs> 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 I want to see the discovery. Yeah, I mean, that's caused real damage to me, saying that I eat my own poop. Yeah. It's a huge reputational hit. <laughs> what is otherwise a sterling reputation on the internet. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, you joke, but I... Come on now. Don't say it like that. <laughs> okay, so... Um, let's read the fucking statement. I, I, I went to great lengths, basically to paint the picture because what he's he's trying to paint himself as the victim i've gone w out of my way to harass and malign him it couldn't be further from the truth this man from the inception of this has come out unreasonable unwilling to compromise attacking me and threatening free speech and fair use so here's the article by Ryan Kavanaugh coming out with some hot, hot clip art that we were able to find. It's just some royalty free shit. Here, actually, we found where the clip art came from. Here it is, guys. If you want to use it, I should use it in my own article against him. <laughs> it's called Male Hand Holding Megaphone from which the Hydra comes out. The metaphor of slander and evil speech. I have chills. 
I'm, yeah. I'm, wow, so epic. This is the metaphor for slander. How did he get his article published in the extremely reputable periodical that we all know, csq.com? It's a story with substance. Power, you obviously. Know? Power yeah. and influence. CSQ, I mean. What the fuck is CSQ? <laughs> it's C-Suite C Quarterly. quarterly well, which is, could you imagine a more fucking douchebag place to Well, he's putting them on the map. CSQ, baby. This is a huge breaking story for them. A huge exclusive. All right, here we go. The dark side of the power of social media. Why I... Ryan Kavanaugh sued Ethan Klein and his H3 podcast. That's actually the sound it's making. Today, I sued Ethan Klein. He has lied to his followers and the public and profited from it. I was left no choice but to do exactly what he told his millions of fans I did prior and sue him. I, I haven't been able to figure out one lie I've told on this guy. All I've ever done is read headlines that people have written about him. On April 17, 2021, Triller, a company I have an interest in and helped to found, put on a boxing match between YouTube star turned fighter Jake Paul and MMA fighter Ben Askren. He keeps trying to diminish his role in Triller, but if you look at every interview he's ever done and even the bottom of his own fucking article, it describes him as the co-founder of Triller. So I don't know why he keeps trying to pretend like he's got nothing to do with Triller. And every time Triller has an interview or anything, it's always him. He's like represents them in every interview. Um, so it was one of the first events of our new business, Triller Fight Club, following our initial foray into the fight game. The November 28 fight between Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. was sold 1.6 million pay-per-view. Fantastic. The Paul Askren fight was successful, but not as successful as it should have been. Thanks to internet piracy, we estimate an excess of 4 million unique views of the fight were stolen. At the price set of 50 bucks, that equals more than 100 million in lost revenue. So, okay. Right off the bat, he's setting the stage for me being the sole reason why uh, his event with Jake Paul and Ben Askren Let's fucking be honest, bro. Mike Tyson versus Roy Jones Jr. We really think that ball that you're gonna get as much revenue from that fight. Oh man! But he's setting it up where I basically ruined his business. And once again, I think it's important to claim that we didn't even cover this pay-per-view event until five days after the event. Pirating pay-per-view events is not a new phenomenon. While it's illegal, it usually a single person pirating for their own viewing. We offered an amnesty to those who did that, simply pay 50 bucks, and we would not come after them. Unfortunately, in this case, podcasts like H3 and Ethan Clyde didn't just pirate the event for personal use. Instead, they rebroadcast it to millions of people, not only resulting in hundreds of millions in lost sales for Triller, but money made for Clyde through his own ad sales and sponsorships, which he sold against Triller's pirated event. Yeah, that's just a straight-up fucking defamatory lie. And that's why I spent so much time pre preluding this is because he 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 just he's trying to flip the script, change the narrative, and make it seem like he's this poor guy that I'm trying to ruin his business. All I did is the same thing I've always done since the first time I was sued for copyright infringement and won is reacting to a short clip with critical commentary. The podcast was like three hours long and we watched like a few minutes of their three hour broadcast, five days after the event, and somehow I'm responsible for a hundred million dollars in lost revenue. And their the, event was like four hours long, right? Yeah. We reacted to a few was minutes. Was it even a minute? I mean. I, I'm not super, I'm not, I'm not gonna say cause I'm not familiar, but it was a short amount. Yeah. I mean, like, the content for him to be like, oh, yeah, we, we made money and sponsorships against it. Like we did a super long podcast that day and this made up like a fraction of our podcast. But also we didn't rebroadcast it. We just watched a short clip of it, dude. So what the fuck? He's lying. And so. Stop fucking lying. 
Yeah, and so, like, if people aren't actually familiar with the facts, if you read this, then they'd be like, oh, well, fuck this guy, Ethan. The truth is he targeted me from the beginning. I think... Uh, my, my guess is because I said that I pirated it, and that pissed him off, and I always have this theory that Keemstar was somehow involved in it. They've been talking... <laughs> I, I'm serious. I mean, it's just a theory. It's speculation. Yeah, we have no idea. Yeah, we can't say for certain, but whenever Face Banks was pressing him and saying, you know, Ethan's probably not actually going to go to jail, Keem's like, I don't know. I've been talking to people. He, well, I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> and that was pretty I, people think on. I'm kidding, but I, there is a picture of him coming out of Triller headquarters. There is Keemstar having the press release and posting it. There's all this, like, you know, Kimstar has this dossier on me that he sends everybody. Like, Ryan's got all the greatest hits. Mm -hmm. I know it seems far-fetched, and maybe it is. It's just speculation, obviously. But he targeted me specifically for a good headline and because I don't know why. I, because I really don't know why. He thought it'd be an easy dub, I think. In an ideal and fair world, it would be YouTube's responsibility to stop this grand theft. <laughs> now this is a whole new can of worms like let's get oh yeah other big channels showed the fight too and weirdly he never fucking targeted them he never tried to sue them he never made a press release calling them out by name right why huge channels YouTube channels some with more than double the amount of subscribers why were why were they not targeted so he says it would be YouTube's responsibility to stop this grand theft. Instead, current laws make it Triller's responsibility. So right now, and this should concern you, he is saying that there's this what is the there's this specific law that allows he's <sighs> This guy is so fucking dumb. There is a law that allows forums where people post content to not be held responsible for what people do and say on that. It's like Section 230 or something. It's a huge... Yeah, that's it's exactly huge, it's Section 230. Okay, and YouTube, Facebook, Reddit, even Triller, which is why this is so ironic, wouldn't be able to exist without this 230 because... They would be held liable for whatever the fuck anyone on their platform did, which means they'd be sued into oblivion. They would cease to exist. That's why I find it so ironic that Ryan is somehow advocating for that, which would basically make Triller impossible to exist. Yeah. So weird. What an idiot. The owner of pirated content must identify and report the thieves, which Triller did with Ethan and H3. In turn, YouTube can take several days to investigate and then maybe take down the pirated stream, which it did. It didn't! He never reported us. We never got a DMCA request. He never did any legal notice. In fact, there was someone who re-uploaded the whole fucking fight, and as far as I know, it's still up on, the, on YouTube. Section 230 provides immunity to social media companies like Facebook and Twitter against being sued over content on their site. This allows them to operate and flourish without needing to moderate content. Stadium. Exactly. <clears throat> there are tons of videos. I, I'm not going to play it, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yes, it is. Uh, One of the most interesting things. It's almost a million views, over a million views, and it was published in April. So, uh, this we've is had. The f so, that, this is the most interesting thing to me about this case is that he never made an attempt to remove the pirated content from our channel or the people who re-uploaded it and put it on YouTube. As far as I'm aware, the law requires in copyright that you first make a, an attempt to remedy the situation through DMC or something else, which they never did. And he's saying here, the owner must identify and report the thieves, which Triller did with Klein and H3. I can tell you right now, I had never got a DMCA request. In turn, YouTube can take several days to investigate and then maybe take down the priority stream. That's also not true. When YouTube gets a DMCA, it comes down immediately. The guy doesn't understand what he's talking about. But by then, it was too late. Everyone would have purchased the event, 
had already watched the pirated event. And the pirates, in this case H3 and Ethan, were enriched at Triller's expense. Once again, a fucking lie. We didn't watch this event until five days after the, pe- the pay-per-view event. Are you telling me that people were buying tickets to this pay-per-view event five days after the event? So it was too, what was it too late for? It was too late for you to make money from this event. You have it backwards. Do you see that he is intentionally fucking misleading and lying about me? And the facts of the case. A big lie. Everyone, people would have purchased the event and already watched the pirated version. The pirates, in this case, Ethan Klein, were enriched at Triller's expense. Liar. Fucking liar. That whole thing is just a sea of slander and lies, in the words of Keemstar. I'm in a sea of slander and lies. Yep. So, once again, you know, if you don't know anything and you read this, you'd be like, wow, that's fucked up, you know. In the entertainment industry, a great deal of a company's value is in its intellectual property. That's ironic, considering he's being sued for stealing the triad, the three, the triangle ring. Protecting a pay-per-view event is exactly the same as putting a fence around a factory. Or placing an armed guard inside a jewelry store. If a burglar broke into a store and stole millions of dollars of jewelry and resold it, they would be prosecuted. This is no different in how it harmed Triller, which spent tens of millions of dollars making this product. Yeah, I mean, that analogy would work if I stole the event in its entirety and re-uploaded it to YouTube or resold it or something like that. That's not what happened, dipshit. I reacted to a brief clip. That's called fair use, motherfucker. It's part of the first, um, it's part of fucking free speech. You don't have a right not to be criticized. After the Paul Askren fight, Triller identified several other businesses and individuals that pirated all or part of the event and focused on those who actually profited off the piracy, such as Klein and his company, H3H3 Productions. Again, they, they, from the beginning, they've tried to make it sound like I like resold. And I remember in the original complaint, they said that I was like had a PayPal link and I was accepting uh, payments to watch it. And it's just fucking such a lie, such a lie. Late in April, in the U.S. District Court for the Central District of California, Triller filed suit. Included in the defendants was the H3 podcast run by Ethan Klein and his wife. Uh, Ela under H3 H3 Productions, Ela and Ethan Klein after their alter egos. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about, but I think he's referring to how he is suing Teddy Fresh. How, if you guys want to, here's my proof that he's just legally harassing us, like Scientology. Why did he sue Teddy Fresh? Teddy Fresh is a separate and distinct legal entity that has nothing to do with H3 Podcast. Why is he suing Teddy Fresh? So, someone want to explain that? Ryan? (laughs) Anybody? Anybody It's Ryan in the chat. You're getting nervous, man. He he claims that Teddy Fresh is our alter ego, which I guess what that means is it's just a shell company to hide assets. Like, dude, what the fuck? Stupid. Again, self-report. Right. I wonder what kind of alter egos got going Proxima on. Proxima Media. Right. Look into it. Well, well, you should walk that back a little bit. It's Proxima Media. I just said look into it. Well, I guess look into it. We're not saying the proximity is alter ego, but he does have a habit of self-reporting. That's speculation, Dan. You're Definitely. Okay, Dan. What the fuck do I know? You're supposed to be the one to keep me on the rails. I t- He's got a company, Proxima Media, Shh, you know? You guys are flipped. Go off, King. What'd you say, B? I said you guys are flipped today. You're keeping him flipped. on the rails. Right, right, right. I right, know. True. Our roles are flipped. 
Ah, Ryan got okay. I was like, Ryan oh, got shit. into the sh- Ryan got into the mainframe. Ah, get Ryan out of this. Ah, I'm flipped. Okay, thank you. We got a flip button here today. <sighs> H3 is broadcast on YouTube and elsewhere. I mean, okay, elsewhere. I'm trying to make it seem like a big deal. It's just podcasting RSS feeds. Not only did H3 and Klein profit from the stolen PPV, but they also bragged on their podcast about pirating it. I mean, yeah, I said that I personally, as a person, viewed a pirated stream because I didn't want to support Jake Paul, who was being accused of SA in the New York fucking Times, wasn't it? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was the New York Times, the paper of record. So I made a conscientious objection to not support them because I wasn't, didn't want to support Jake Paul. It was a personal decision I made, not in the office, in my home. According to them, I can just pay them 50 bucks for amnesty, but no. Triller, not me, filed a lawsuit to stop and hopefully recoup the financial damages that had been done to the company. The piracy allowed the clients to make a substantial amount from their advertising and sponsors off stolen property. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. We just did a normal podcast. It wasn't like on the corner slinging tickets to this exclusive event. Uh, like, a literally. By the way, he keeps saying like, oh, well, they're lying. It wasn't me that filed the lawsuit. The reason we've ever even named him is because his lawyer told our lawyer that Ryan Kavanaugh was personally behind the lawsuit. He was trying to intimidate us from the very get-go, saying, Ryan Kavanaugh's behind this lawsuit, so you really don't want to fuck around with us. And also, in one of the lawsuits, they alleged that we defamed Ryan Kavanaugh for saying he looks like Harvey Weinstein. So how is it that you're not involved in these lawsuits? Stop trying to act like a little fucking kid. Stop using little baby fucking logic. I'm not, we're not stupid. Well, maybe we are a little bit stupid, but... Not in that Not way. that stupid. Not that stupid. Initially, Klein seemed to be interested in a settlement. Okay, thank you. But against all common legal practices, rather than negotiating good faith, he disclosed his views on the suit and the terms of the discussed settlement on his podcast to millions of viewers and further disparaged Triller, which included his offer to pay 50000 to Triller. What's wrong with that? Against all common legal practices... It's like, okay, I talked about it. I don't even know where he's talking about because it's like this behavior breached multiple litigation laws. Okay, so no, it didn't. Also, I mean, we'd have to go back and look, but this this explanation that you shared the details of the negotiation, um, that only happened after the negotiations broke off. That's how I remember it right. too. Right, you were you were purposely staying low key about all of this as it was all playing out, and it was only once the decision was made. Okay, I guess the lawsuit's happening that you started to talk about on the show. So that's how I, I, I remember that that, it too. And, yeah, and so it's just another intentional misrepresentation of the truth, an outright lie, to make me look like the villain. Um. Yeah, it's like he showed in bad faith. I mean, I remember saying on the podcast that I was like, I want to handle this amicably, so let's just see how this goes. And it was only after they told me I have to make pay $900,000 and make that statement where I was like, well, I can't do that, so fuck it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was definitely not operating in bad faith. Absolutely not. If anything, they were with that fucking settlement offer. Since that time, Klein has only escalated his juvenile reactions. Well, I take cross with juvenile. I'm a grown-ass man. (laughs) He has posted video after video attacking and slandering me personally. Despite the fact that I, while I am a shareholder and co-founder, am not Triller. Okay. You are not Triller as a person? He says, I am not Triller. I am not an officer. I am not CEO. He says, I am a co-founder. I am not unilateral. Deci- I do not make unilateral decisions for Triller, nor did I personally sue him. Okay, well. 
That's not what your lawyer told me. Yeah, I was going to say, talk to your lawyer then. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, you are, you have been involved in these lawsuits. You have sent me threatening messages on Instagram. You have named yourself in these lawsuits saying I defamed you by saying you look like Harvey Weinstein. You have, and also every time I see a Triller press conference, it's always Ryan Kavanaugh speaking on behalf of Triller. You know, like, and when you type your name, right? Triller is Ryan Kavanaugh's big comeback. I'm sorry, bro, but this argument stinks. Klein understands how search engine optimization works and has titled his puerile videos to show up when my name is searched. His legion of followers has amplified the attack. By the way, he accused me of being some like CEO genius. I literally just type his name. I just put his name in the title of a highlight. Like Ryan Kavanaugh's new whatever. That's not like SEO magic. Genius. <laughs> Mad genius. Although we... Uh, it's just... It's like, I don't know what the fuck you're accusing me of. He has black hatted his way by putting, Ryan Kavanaugh is suing me. Oh, that's a fucking black hat. We need to take him up with Google. My boy's wicked smart. Thank you. I'm an SEO magician. Among other things, he has posted more than eight podcasts disparaging me. Though he has never met me. Again, he keeps saying that. Like, I'm sorry, bro. Why do I, why do I have to meet you? Because of shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to meet you. <laughs> yeah. I've read enough headlines about you to know that you're a terrible person. Not someone I'd ever want to meet or associate with. He's never spoken to me. He does not know me. Only people that know me are allowed to criticize me, Your Honor. <laughs> he does not know me well. And so it is defamation. People that know me well all love me, Your Honor. They would never say a bad thing about me. Through these podcasts, he has spread false information, which he knows to be false and is done only with the intent of harm. He keeps saying that, but he's not saying what. What false information? All I have ever done is read headlines of reputable organizations. That's all. That's all I've ever done, my friend. All I've ever done is read headlines of reputable news organizations. If you think those are defamatory, then take it up with them. Pull up some headlines, Dan. We've showed the Ponzi one from Variety. How about the DUI ones posted in the New York Times? I mean... Financier in Hollywood strikes deal in DWI. Is this defamation to read a headline? Mr. Go, scroll down. That, who's that? That's Ryan Kavanaugh in the New York Times. Scroll up a little bit. Mr. Kavanaugh's arrest in the fall of 2006 was followed by months of legal proceedings during which the financier argued <laughs> that he was unlawfully detained by the police officers who accused him of having been the driver of a vehicle that took off after hitting their car. The New York Times. <laughs> Do you see it? Is that defamation? It's probably annoying to hear this, right? It's kind of funny. Yeah, the chat kind of likes it. I think it's funny, but I don't want people to be like, it's hurting That's my funny. Okay, next article. How about the babysitter one? How about the fabricating a memo? Hollywood exec sued by babysitter and waste fat. Fox News! Fox 5. You know. Hollywood producer and financier is being sued by a former babysitter for his newborn child who alleged she is owed more than... 175000 after you abruptly fired in 2020, only two months after, into your 13-month contract. Ryan, you gotta pay the fuck up. When you sign a contract, it means you gotta pay. Show the one where he forged a document 
against his then ex-president. Am I... Now, answer me. Am I creating any allegations? Am I making any claims? No. I'm simply reading headlines. This is from Deadline. Relativity fabricated memo claiming sexual harassment against former co-president Adam Fields. Judge awards Fields 8.4 million. Go to where it says cap cap. After a for forensic audit of the computer was conducted, it was found that the memo had been generated by someone who signed it as cap cap. That's fraud. Now who do you think cap cap is? I would guess uh, Ryan Kavanaugh had it, guys. It's a wild guess! <laughs> Cap Cap! I'm not creating these claims! These are things you have done! That's a pretty fucking insane thing to do, by the way! To forge a document! Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? So, again, this is fucking why this is important. This is right to my it, this is at the very heart of what our rights are is me reading headlines defamation absolutely not do you understand how insane this is this is scientology this is legal harassment he doesn't like that I'm talking about all the shitty things he's done. I am not creating these claims out of thin air. This is a bad dude, it's well documented, and it's all been published by huge fucking media companies. If you have a problem with what they're saying, take it up with them, not me. None of those articles were published in uh, C-Suite Quarterly, which is the only source that I put any veracity Good point, into, Dan. so, you know. New York Times isn't C-Suite Quarterly, but it is considered, for the most part, news. a very strong reputation. Fake news. Fake news. So is Variety, Hollywood Reporter, Fox News, C-Suite Quarterly. That's, that's it. I thought the CSQ. I, trust. I thought it was like a community newsletter. I didn't, I've never heard of it prior. You've never heard of C-Suite Quarterly? Nope. I honestly thought it was a community newsletter. What the fuck's wrong with you, A.B.? Dude, what community? Reporting. Wait, what That's community? That's why you're never going to be in the C-suite, you know that? You're never going to become a you're member. You're never going to get They have a membership. The What's the membership, by the way? You can become a member. The Professional Network and Online Reputation Amplifier? Wait. <laughs> the fuck? Yeah, I mean, this is obviously... Wait, it's just a service you pay for to amplify your reputation? Yeah, he... Well, why would he post it here? It's like a weird self-report. Well, so he's gonna post this. Yeah. Who's gonna carry this fucking bullshit? Also, that's the thing is, so I, he, I, I would <laughs> hazard a guess. This is speculation that CSQ does not have like an editorial. Staff. Oh, you don't think this was fat check? No, of course not. I mean, it wasn't vetted. No, if you want to, because the New York Times report, does that. Yeah, of course, and you know they're not. They're they have not a perfect strict by any means, but th I mean, yeah, they're gonna. They have a strict editorial process. Yes, an editor is gonna look over and. and so for them to yeah. print something like Ryan Kavanaugh got arrested for doing a DUI hit and run, that's what the police officer said. They would vet that. Uh, certainly. Yeah. Especially against someone as litigious as Ryan Kavanaugh. Maybe we <laughs> should we publish something in CSQ. Let's sign up. Oh, that would be fucking epic. <laughs> well, I did write a big statement, which I'll get to. Okay. That I've been looking for a place to publish in response to his. And I'm, I think CSQ is a good place, but I was thinking of publishing it at Does Ryan Kavanaugh Look Like Harvey Weinstein? Oh, that has, that's about as reputable as CSQ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which I think is a great hub for... Hard-hitting reporting. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, speaking of which, he gets he talks about it here. He has created a website comparing me to Harvey Weinstein, resulting in further false articles and sites to be published and directed at traffic to these false articles and sites. Okay, once again, he's totally misrepresenting what this is. This is not we did not compare him to Harvey Weinstein indeed. Okay. We literally and the website's name is basically says it all. The website, by the way, here's his article. Here's the website. Does Ryan Kavanaugh look like Harvey Weinstein? And the URL itself debunks his claim. 
okay? It's all about appearance only. A lot of our viewers and, and people notice in general that he strikes a resemblance to Harvey Weinstein. And so we built a website, Does Ryan Kavanaugh Look Like Harvey Weinstein, to basically help the public right. tell the two apart. If yeah. anything, he should be thanking me. Right. That's a great point. I'm not comparing him indeed. In fact, I have explicitly gone out of my way to say Ryan has never been accused of you know, sexual misconduct. This is a comparison in looks only. So to put that out there like I'm trying to, you know, malign him in that way. Like, look at this. It's just absolutely fucking false. No, you're making um, sure people know that it's two different people. That's what I'm... Th it's yeah. a public service. Go oh, ahead, Might Lord. I add, we're actually now number one on Google in very many places. Uh, I've heard reports that we're number one in, on Google in Australia, for example. Oh. In Sweden, we're number two. Oh, mm -hmm. that's it. So that's super interesting. Advances. So, like yeah. that to me says that Google has recognized our website as having valuable information, <laughs> right? Because yeah. Google is the premier search engine. Mm -hmm. Google has trillions and trillions of search results, and they identified our website as the most relevant one. So, I mean, people want to know. <laughs> yeah, clearly, people want to know. Well, I mean, here is him kissing Harvey Weinstein on the head. And when you see them side by side, it's really confusing. So this is a horrible monster who's in jail, and this mm. is Ryan Kavanaugh, a horrible monster who's not in jail. <laughs> horrible monster for very different reasons than Harvey Weinstein. Not sexual crimes, and he's not been even accused of any sexual crimes. But when you see them side by side, buddied up, kissing each other and stuff like that, then you say, I just want the public to be like, okay, that's Ryan that's Harvey. Correct. Hey, you got it. I got it. The website's it. working. Yeah, so... I just want to say for the record, I, I don't see the resemblance. Yeah, I, I know. You said that a lot, but the people disagree with you. There's even a test. There's even a game you can do if you guys haven't seen this. We built a game. I caught anybody coming out of the house yet, but... You so know. you can test it's your time. skills. It gives you, you know, three, two, one... Why am I hearing Wendy? What's going on? It says, is this Harvey or Ryan? So is this on the website? Yes. Oh. So I think it's Harvey. So there you go. I got it right. Nice one, nice one. So anyway, we built the game out. and I think I'll, sp I'll publish my statement here anyway. <laughs> Great choice. Um, oh, Ryan, oh, AB found something interesting. I could be mistaken, so let's just preface this with... Oh, it just says pro... Oh, so it says advisors' profiles. Yeah. So according to this page, Ryan Kavanaugh is... Oh. ...an advisor. <laughs> that seems like a biased... Interesting. ...place to report of your... Of course. Of course. Oh, nice find. Oh, that's <laughs> so fucking funny. He's on the board of this magazine that published his... Uh, well, he's an advisor. Maybe... The, yeah, advisor. Yeah. <laughs> According to this. So, I mean, you know. That's there on you have the site? It. That's on the site? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's so fucking funny. Anyway, let's continue. It's just important for me to, you know, cover everything. He created a website comparing me to Harvey Weinstein, resulting in further false articles and sites to be published and directed traffic to these false articles and sites. I don't know what you're talking about. People say you look like him. I'm debunking that. Again, yeah. And again, directed traffic to these false articles. Your issue is with the false article. I think, I think he's, I don't know what he's saying. I think he's... Take it up with fucking variety, man. He has sent, and this is where he's just straight up lying. He has sent paid traffic to the site to push it to page one of Google search results for my name. Motherfucker, you have no evidence. You are straight up lying. We have never bought traffic. Again, a self-report. Like, I'm sorry, bro. You cannot just make statements like that and fucking lie. I have not bought paid traffic. I have not. That's defamation. He's lying. He has no proof. Oh, what the fuck is this? You want to talk about defamation? What are you saying? He has encouraged people on Reddit, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram, and elsewhere, to click on this site 
upvote comments and encourage to keep pushing it higher in my search results. Listen, bro, I'm not Google. I don't control the search results, okay? <laughs> I'm just a man who's trying to clarify. Um, when I look... Yeah, so I... Uh, Go ahead, love. I, I worked with SEO before, before this job, and so I, I took the liberty to search uh, through <laughs> Ryan Kavanaugh's personal website, and allegedly, you know, nothing, nothing is for sure, this but is, this I saw signs of paid increased uh, rank Google ranks. So I saw in like backlinks to like spam websites to promote his website, basically. So he is actually allegedly the one. Well, exactly, and everything he accuses me of is that's based on your expert opinion. It's allegation. It's unsubstantiated. Yeah. There's no proof of that. It's just a speculation based on love's expertise. But like it all is a self-report. Everything he accused me of, he knows because he does it. But to just blatantly accuse me of paying for traffic is psychotic. <laughs> Klein has instructed and encouraged his followers to attack my social media channels. No. Which they have going so far as threatening me and my family if I don't leave Ethan alone. I have received so many threats, negative messages, vulgar comments from Klein and his followers from me that I've been forced to restrict commenting on my social media. Um, I have, at every turn, said do not go harass Ryan Kavanaugh. Do not engage with him on social media. We are fighting a important legal battle and going and sending him your comments directly is not productive. It's wrong and I don't support it. And I have never done that and I have never encouraged anyone to do that. And just a reminder, he's the one commenting on your Thanksgiving post with your child and your pregnant wife harassing you by posting links to this article. Fucking allegedly. exactly, A.B. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> Uh, and well, also, well, one thing he has for sure been doing is t hitting me up in the DMs, posting, right, tagging me and showing up in my stories. Right. Uh, he has posted and reposted a misleading variety article with a headline that includes the phrase Ponzi scheme to, inv to imply that I was involved in fraud. He has posted this no fewer than 30 times. I'm assuming he's just including every podcast I've done with this so it's not like i've been posting it but okay if you don't like the variety article take it up with them again not my fucking problem dude i showed the article like it's it's still up it looks just like this well minus the hell goatee and stuff you know Uh, Klein never mentions that the content of the article is actually debunked in its own headline. That's the weirdest thing. Like, again, if you open it. I have, by the way, mentioned that's been retracted many times. In fact, there's even a highlight of me saying something like a correction for my lawyers or something. What was it called? Yeah, so he says it's debunked in the... He says... Klein never mentions that the content of the article is actually debunked in its own headline. Where? No, 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 no. It says debunks its own headline. Oh, debunks its own headline. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, isn't that a problem with the article then? Don't, like, talk to the author. Also, see, no, I'm not a lawyer. Am I not allowed to show a headline? But also, debunk, I mean, the fact that they retracted it does not necessarily mean that he his ex-partner didn't accuse him of running like his ex-partner did accuse him exactly of running, and then later retracted it but the accusation happened yes and that's the report that's in the headline like it doesn't just magically disappear from history because he later said oh never mind i'm not going to pursue this legally we we settled that you know they settled it behind the scenes that's what it, that's what the update is right is that they came to a settlement or they came to an agreement of some kind but the accusation happened. I mean, that, that's, that's something that did happen at one point, yeah? By the way, I'm, I'm going to put Discord on the screen. Can I put this? Because I want to show the thumbnail. Or maybe you just pull it up, but... It's called A Correction for Ryan Kavanaugh. And it says... Here, I'm just going to show this. Here. I made a mistake. Okay? 
There it is. To say that I've never even commented it, once again, blatant lie. A correction for Ryan Kavanaugh. I'm what the fuck, bro. So, the article's headline refers to a draft complaint that was never filed. It was filed. It was just... So, this is real interesting because the, the Hollywood reporter wrote an article about this, just came out yesterday, which I'm going to read after this. Mm -hmm. The article refers to a draft complaint that was never filed, while the article itself quotes all the parties involved denying any allegations of fraud. Dude, that is so not what the article says, bro. What happened, it's really kind of complicated and interesting, but basically the media gets access to complaints before the lawyers do. And so what happened was they did file these. The, the media got it, wrote articles about it. Mm -hmm. It can take a few days for the lawyers to actually get it. So by the time the lawyers got it, they had already resolved it behind the scenes. Right. But they did file the lawsuit, and the media reported on it. Yeah, it's the only way that they could even know about it. So the fact that, you know, he's trying to make it seem like it was never filed and stuff is very weird. It's like this weird thing where they, they did file it, and they're trying to pretend like it never existed. I mean, take it up with fucking variety. I didn't write the article. Yeah, again. Like Nevertheless, Klein continues to do everything he can to harm me, my business, and Triller by flogging the inaccurate variety headline and disregarding the factual content of the article lie. Klein states, I don't pay my employees. I didn't pay my nanny. This is false and misleading. Again, we showed the articles. Klein has posted, I have two DUIs, also false. I'm just, it's the New York Times, bro. Take it up with the New York Times. Well, and he wasn't convicted of two DUIs. He was arrested twice for DUI, and then one of them was mysteriously reduced to, what was it, wet and reckless? Wet, or wet and shit? wild. Wet and wild. <laughs> it was wet and wild. Yes. Yeah, yeah. A, uh, a rich Hollywood producer, you know, driving drunk, allegedly, and hitting and running, allegedly, somehow mysteriously having his charge reduced. And by the way, when he hit lesser. and run, allegedly, uh, the second time, he was already on probation for the first, for the first offense. One. Right. And this guy's not in jail. Yeah, I mean... Do you have a driver, Ryan, because you can't have a license? Is that true or no? Is that true? I don't know. <laughs> it's on Wikipedia. You can source it. What? Oh, here it is. Wet and reckless is the informal name given to a crime. Oh. Wet and reckless. That sounds so fun. I want to have a wet and reckless. Let's get wet and wet reckless. It just, wet sounds, like a, it just sounds like a fun time. He's like, I was not convicted of DUIs. It was wet and reckless. Girls gone wild. It is typically a result of a first offense DUI plea in California when the defendant pleads guilty uh, to drunk driving offense. Blah, 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 blah. So it's all in the semantics of like the specific type of charge. Yeah, he's trying think, to act like I just made it up out of nothing. Right. I it's mean, in the New York Times, bro. So maybe we, you know. Not DUI, maybe just you were driving while intoxicated. I mean, that, regardless of what the charge is called. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm not, I'm not like a lawyer. I don't understand, like, the technicality, but the facts of the matter is that the New York Times reported that you were arrested for driving drunk twice. The first time you went on probation, you lost your license, and you were driving illegally the second time, hit a car, ran away while drunk, and that's what's reported. I don't know if you want to call that a DUI or whatever. That's what the New York Times reported. So take it up with them. Hmm. And then, okay, Klein has most recently paid Wikipedia editors, plural, editors, hordes of editors, to destroy my Wikipedia page. Once again, a fucking flat fabrication. Hordes of editors. My page has been untouched for years. With neither po why do you care about your Wikipedia page so much, you weirdo? <laughs> Dude, that's my favorite. This has been my favorite wrinkle in the entire story is getting into a flame war with the forum mods. <laughs> yeah, by the way, Ryan Kavanaugh was banned from Wikipedia for threatening legal action against editors. Well, we still don't a hundred percent know that was him, right? But it's a it's an account that claims that it's him that is very like the account itself said this article. I am Ryan. Is, right. 
And also, he somehow knew that a third lawsuit was going to come out against us this week, right. which so, nobody mean, knew. We can infer that it is. It's a, I think it's a conclusion. It's a. It's an educated. Yeah. Uh, but we, conclusion, you know, we but it's not verified. Trace the IP or anything. So. Well, we know he's good at not making up fake names whenever he's doing something shady. Hence with the uh, Cav Cav account. Right. Cav Cav. Now this one is something uh, Cav or RK. Yeah, RK. Or RK7777 or something. So anyway, it has been untouched for years and neither positive nor negative addition since 2008. Okay. 19. It's like, okay. It was fair and balanced description of my business personal life. Really, it was fair and balanced? I remember there was like not even a mention of anything of the, all of the controversies he's been in. Not even a single mention of anything. Uh, in the past 45 days, however, Klein coordinated an attack, removing almost anything that could be seen as positive and replacing it with an onslaught of negative, intentionally misleading, and accurate information. Again, you're fucking lying. I don't have hordes of Wikipedia editors, just like I don't have hordes of bots visiting our website. It's just straight malicious lies. And I'll tell you what. Wikipedia has a pretty strict rule on what you can cite and what sources are valid and they have left up whatever information was put there Klein started a reddit thread where he and his followers discuss how they plan on harming me and gloat about what they have achieved okay so once again he doesn't understand how reddit works I have not created a thread and discussed how to harm you okay these are people on our community subreddit we, as you know, as we described earlier, have nothing to do with whatever they fucking write and say. As a side note, they probably attack us more than anyone else in the world. They're always going after us. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. If anyone should be suing our subreddit, it's me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Participants on the thread include uh, the same people who are editing my Wikipedia page and bragging about it. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, based on what is he saying that? The same people who are editing. He's saying it's the same. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how, how the fuck he would know that. Those same editors also happen to be editing H3, H3, and Ethan's Wikipedia page positively. Why do you care if they're adding positive shit to my Wikipedia? What are you talking about? Also, it's fucking Wait, Wikipedia. Fuck? Every, like anybody story? can. Are you high, bro? <laughs> yeah, anybody can edit say, it. But why is he? Source. So yeah. again, so that that just another self report. Because all of a sudden, all the negative shit started showing up on my Wikipedia. And I was like, hmm, I wonder who's behind this. Right. <laughs> and now, all of a sudden, he's complaining about how, oh, well, I've been paying editors to keep my Wikipedia page clean. No. Or to, you know, write positive things about me. No. Klein caused his followers to flood the App Store. And give Triller's app a one-star rating. Prior to Client's malicious attack, Triller had a 4.7-star 4 4 .7 star rating. Through Client's coordinated actions, he caused thousands of bots, again, and fake accounts, as well as his followers, to leave one-star ratings. Thankfully, the App Store has removed a number of fake ratings. I'm happy for you. As we're able to prove their malicious intent and inaccurate posting, but still... Remain the attacks uh, on a continual basis. Okay, so again, if you've been watching this show, you know that I've only ever encouraged you guys to leave honest reviews of Triller's app. That's just fuck. And again, he's saying I'm hiring bots and stuff, just not true. All this amounts to textbook malicious behavior intended to harm me and Triller. This leaves me with no choice but to sue. One malignant internet personality with a large following, the equivalent of an angry child with a loaded gun can cause disproportionate harm to anyone using lie, slander, and SEO to suffer <laughs> few, if any, consequences. I mean, the irony, of course, being that he is a, an elite Hollywood fucking personality that you've wields the legal system to silence any criticism. What has happened to me could happen to anyone. If a disturbed individual who espouses race... Okay, and then he says... I'm a disturbed individual who espouses racist, homophobic, and other offensive views. Again, how is that relevant to your... How is that relevant to the article? Uh, can muster a large, obedient social media following and attacks. 
Hopefully this case will not only stop crime, but serve as a deterrent for others who use social media to harm those who do not deserve it and help set a precedent that is this type of behavior cannot be tolerated. So there you have it. The biggest lie, of course, that Kavanaugh tells in this whole article comes at the footnotes. Ryan Kavanaugh is the 26th highest grossing movie producer of all time. <laughs> um, first of all, who's counting? And second of all, you should probably mention that you utterly bankrupted your fucking production company, dude. Why the fuck you lying? Why oh, wait, Cam, lying? wait, hold on. Cam is coming with the uh, receipts. Oh, according to the numbers.com, Kavanaugh is t number two, 227. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> so, <how? laughs> we got to update that. Yeah, Ryan Kavanaugh. Uh, what? Two, tw 227. So, okay. Because it's such an arbitrary number for him to pull, like, maybe it's a different way of calculating it well he doesn't source it he doesn't say according to what like according to what according to me <laughs> me yeah i was just saying yeah <laughs> how by the way how did all those hit movies do for you bankruptcy bro so that's awesome I mean, he's not on the hollywood reporters list is he here's another one from wikipedia okay this that's the site oh he used this citation on wikipedia so does it say he's whatever 27 Let's see. It's only a top 10. It doesn't even have hit. It doesn't even no, go to Cam saying that the site that we just checked out. Oh, it uses Wikipedia. That is the citation on Wikipedia. That's what. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I have no idea where he's pulling that figure from. I found something on Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> I can share it. Oh, that sounds yeah, good. Please do. Yeah, let's see. It looks like just something he made and put on Pinterest. It's kind of well. Why stop at t 21? Uh, let's just say the you know f five. Ryan Kavanaugh, 21 highest grossed movie producer. Wait, did we just find Ryan Kavanaugh's Pinterest account? It says Ryan Kavanaugh. Yeah, Who, we did. It's all oh just shit God. of himself. Who Wait, we did that? just find. Well, uh, I mean, uh, you know. <laughs> Look at this. We don't know that it's him, but. Well, who else is fucking doing this? Why would he use his own name? Oh, Dude. that's right. He always, he always does. does. That's right. Yeah. Wow, this is pretty weird. This is like a this scrapbook is... that you would make about, like, <laughs> your mom would make for you. What <laughs> the fuck? Oh, my God. All of his wedding photos are on his Pinterest page. Dude, what the hell, bro? <laughs> this is <laughs> fucking crazy. This is the find of the century. Holy <laughs> <God. Look> at... <laughs> we just found this lie. Just Dude, good shit Look at this guy, huh? What a what a guy. The life and success in film world. Man, he really missed those days. I mean, let's just remember you utterly bankrupted your fucking production company. I mean, we don't know that this is his account, but who the fuck else is this obsessed with Ryan Kavanaugh? Let's be honest. Like, who's wait, doing well, this? if we can find pictures that like no one else would have access to, it could help. Well, there was, there is a wedding photo. Oh, I scrolled past. He even put one about him, his the homie bot. I'm not gonna show that because I don't want people to dox him. But like, why is that there, bro? This is very weird. Wow, this is like a shrine to himself. <laughs> There's a folder called Famous Film Producer Ryan Kavanaugh. So somebody manually added all these, huh? I mean, is this? I don't, are we I don't sure use, this isn't like automatically generated? That's understand? what I'm wondering because I don't use Pinterest, so I, I don't know. But yeah, maybe it's. Just I mean, this is an account with one follower, Ryan at Ryan Kavanaugh 05. The entertainment industry is full of opportunities, and Ryan Kavanaugh is one of them, who grabbed the chance and game name and fame by his enormous works. <laughs> it's <laughs> gotta be him. I don't know. My so enormous works. <laughs> what, what the hell are you talking about, bro? <laughs> one follower, one following. Who's the follower? Let me look. Her name is Hannah Field. I think this I might know. be like an SEO thing that, that someone has done. Who's Hannah Field? Do you want me to look into it? Yeah, no, I'm, it, I'm curious if it's some anybody. associate of his. Without giving away too much information if it's not related, but... Yeah, let's go into the Matrix on this one. It also says saved by user. 
and it's like tagged. I mean, it could be automated still, even then, but I don't, I don't know. It's Cal weird re regardless. I really feel like this is as SEO. Well, here's a PDF. Yeah, they attached a PDF. Brian Kavanaugh, an intelligent producer in Hollywood's world. Yeah, so his whole shtick, by the way, was that he invented an algorithm that could tell which movie would be a hit. And, uh, well, he's bankrupt. He bankrupted the company. <laughs> to be so. fair, to be fair, his relativity media was very successful for, Until... for many years. Well, I think that just goes to show, like, his algorithm of predicting what movies would be a hit probably was pretty good. Um, it's just everything that came afterwards, like how they ran the company, clearly was not very smart because, I mean, the, the company had tons of hit movies well i think what happened is that well whatever i'm not gonna get into the whole yeah. death of relativity media just watching care. you know what the algorithms only crushed. other studio since relativity uh, relativity's downfall to go bankrupt was people saying hannah is in the chat see i think that that's that's what i was thinking i didn't want to say but I, I think that was a fan that immediately just went to the pinterest and followed it i don't think there's any oh shit okay yeah <laughs> well the only account that he follows is quotes inspirational and motivational and love quotes love that Love he that. posts that shit on his Instagram. Oh my god, so he's a frequent Wait, what? Wait, user. what does he post on his Instagram? He always posts these, like, fucking inspirational Alpha bullshit. male, yeah. uh, oh. inspirational. Oh. This is where he's getting it from. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, if you can match. Okay, now we can do If you can match a if quote he's posted it. to that blog, then, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Alright, give me a minute. Yeah. It's all happening live. <laughs> you know what? We, um... Before we, we go any thank further, our sponsors. we have yeah. to thank our sponsors. All right, so after that, I'm going to read the... He wrote himself a bio on, on uh, CSQ Quarterly that I want to read. But there's a lot more, actually, to get to, so stay with us. I'm going to thank... We have two sponsors I need to thank really fast. First, I want to thank HelloFresh. We love HelloFresh here on the podcast. The Fooper Troopers love it. It's so much fun. Pre-portioned ingredients, fresh, seasonal, delivered right to your doorstep. Skip the grocery stores and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's number one's meal kit. AB, of course, famously made this burrito. Doesn't that look good? Amazing. <laughs> Um, no, but do you have actually real photos, Dan? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, AB. That's all it's just stays have, funny. I have to keep it going. Yeah. There, there's good. some stuff, though. Yeah, these are Fooper Troopers who have sent in. Damn, that looks so good. The, the reason I like HelloFresh is because, one, first of all, if you don't know how to cook, this is a great way to learn. You're going to make beautiful, delicious home-cooked meals. It's more affordable than going out, and it's even more affordable than going to the grocery store because... You don't have to buy a trillion, you know, carrots just to use one carrot in your recipe. Um, the holidays can be hectic, but HelloFresh helps keep things simple with recipes that cut back on meal prep and clean up so you can spend less time in the kitchen and more quality time with the friends and family. HelloFresh offers 50 menu and market items to choose from every week, including vegetarian, calorie smart, and gourmet options, providing plenty of variety. Um, I love it. The Fooper Troopers love it. It's a hit, man. It really is. Go to HelloFresh.com slash H314 and use code H314 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. That is HelloFresh.com slash H314. Use code H314 for 14 free meals. Uh, you know what? There's a reason HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. We love them and thank you to them. And finally, we've got ExpressVPN to thank. ExpressVPN. Using the internet without ExpressVPN is like leaving your keys in your car. While you run in the gas station for a quick snack, you know, most of the time you're probably fine. But one of these times you're going to come back and you're going to see someone driving off with your car. It's not worth it. You need to protect yourself. Every time you connect to an encrypted network, cafe, hotel, airports, any hacker on the same network can gain access to your personal data, passwords, financial details doesn't take much technical knowledge to hack someone either. Just some cheap hardware is needed, and, you know, a smart 14-year-old can do it. And your data is very valuable. Hackers can make up to $1,000 per person selling personal info on the dark web. 
Why should you use ExpressVN? It creates an encryption tunnel that secures, encrypts uh, between devices, your device and the Internet. So hackers cannot steal your sensitive data. It's super secure. What was that? That was not me. It just happened to happen as soon as I sat here. Those upstairs, I don't know. Oh, sounded like it was from there. I'm like, that's not even a, a joined wall. Um, hackers cannot get your data. That's the point. It takes hackers. It's super secure. Take a hacker with a super, super computer over a billion years to get past ExpressVPN's encryption. It's easy to use. It fires up. And with one click of the button, you're protected. And it works on all devices, phones, laptops, tablets, and more. You can stay secure on the go. Yeah, I love ExpressVPN. It's also great if you want to access, um, like, content in another region. If you connect to, like, Netflix in Japan or Canada or England, you're going to find all kinds of new content to watch. Fantastic for that reason. I love ExpressVPN because it gives me the reassurance that my private and sensitive data is protected. So, secure your online data today by visiting expressvpn.com slash h3. That's E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash h3. And you can get an extra three months for free. That's expressvpn.com slash h3. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Someone grab me a water. I'm all out. Parched. And maybe a soda too, eh? Thank you. All right. So, moving on. I got a kick out of this. Ryan Kavanaugh wrote his own bio. I'm assuming he wrote his own bio, obviously. Well, you tell me who you think wrote this. I'm going to read this now. Ryan Kavanaugh is the 26th highest grossing movie producer of all time. Source needed. Citation needed. And the co-founder of Triller. One of three fastest growing social media apps. That can't be true anymore, can it? Ryan started the fight club. Thank you. Uh, Ryan started the Fight Club, which launched with record-breaking Tyson Roy Jones event, with which had the highest uh, grossing pay-per-view event. That's impressive, you know. Um, Ryan is the founder of the financial model that revolutionized how Hollywood financed movies. Mm. His business model, a modified version of the Monte Carlo method is designed to predict the odds of any given film being a financial success. I'm just saying, he bankrupted his company, so I don't think that algorithm was very successful. If it was so successful, he'd be working at Relativity right now. This method was swiftly adopted by Hollywood and radically changed the face of media and how movies were produced. Also, he claims to be the, this one gets a little wild, the architect of Marvel Studios? Isn't that a, like... That's a wild claim, isn't it? It says that. He says, as the architect of Marvel Studios, he established the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Isn't that like a famous person? Kevin Feige, which is number one on that list. Yo, how is he claiming, how is he claiming that? I have no idea. Actually, actually you know what? Been involved I, early on. Hold actually, on. you know what? I'm the architect of Marvel Studios. I, I mean, Relativity may have been involved early on when they were, like, the original Iron Man. But how stuff. can he say he... Okay, so let's... Okay. He's the architect of Marvel Studios. There's these incredible claims, one after the other. Um, as you're sourcing that, Dan, there's another huge claim. He says... Ryan was instrumental in creating Netflix streaming and subscription video <laughs> on demand through a first of its kind deal with Netflix in 2010. So he's, he, now we got to source that claim. He was instrumental in creating Netflix streaming. You guys got a lot to fact check back there. A lot to chew on. You know. Ryan Cav so here we go. Ryan Kavanaugh founded Relative Media. Um, in the first year, he would go on to help Marvel Studios execute one of the most iconic deals at the time, which went end up 
in them creating the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This deal was a seven-year deal that resulted in funding that was north of $500 million. It's crazy he still bankrupted the company after all that success. So where This did you, is the first but, time see, the for thing is, me in the Marvel Universe. All these articles seem like they're written by the same person. Even and, the flow of things. The next paragraph is about Netflix, and it's no New York Times. Yeah, where did you pull that source from? E C O N O Times. Econo Times? Hmm. Interesting. Sounds like propaganda. <laughs> Sounds like the same author. Allegedly. Allegedly. In addition to his work with the film industry, Ryan is a noted philanthropist and volunteer. He's been recognized by Cedar Sinai and the Anti-Defamation League, among others. He also rescues homeless dogs, you guys. And he helps children with major medical conditions. Wow. And he also spends his time on Thanksgiving. I'm not even going to say it. Ryan spearheaded the film and television program. He did over 17 billion in worldwide. Bro, you're bankrupted it. What the fuck does any of this matter? You bankrupt the company. I mean, here's one from the LA Times actually that talks about his accomplishments. If you want to see it, Lee, God damn it! It's. I mean, I get that the LA Times and everyone wants you to pay, you know, but like, ah, oh, it's so hard when you just want to read an article. Well, what did you want me to read from this? Because I can't open it. Here, I can send you the exact quotes right here. There you go. Yeah, LA Times uh, reported that Weinstein's downfall is the most significant Hollywood studio bankruptcy since Ryan Kavanaugh's Relativity Media filed in July 2015. So I think that's your legacy more than anything. Turns out we weren't the ones to compare them originally. Yeah, there's all, uh, exactly. LA Times made that comparison. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, let's see. Um, what'd you no find, Dan? No way. All right, Dan's on oh, the something. Oh, okay. Come on. I think I finally got to the bottom of what he's trying to say with the, the MCU shit. Mm-hmm. This is so funny because we were just talking about this yesterday at the office. Okay. Put it on screen if you Relativity can. Relativity Media uh, produced, <laughs> co-produced, the 2007 Nicholas Cage-led no Ghost oh Rider. Oh my God! That <laughs> cannot be what he's referring Which to. Which is, let's be clear, not part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, not they were connected quick to, to about Iron that. Man, though it should In be the Marvel Universe. <laughs> though it should be, but yeah, this seems to be the only connection I can find. So he co-produced. A, a Ghost Rider movie, which is a Marvel character, uh, evidently. You can't be uh, fucking serious. In 2007, serious. Iron Man came out in 2008, right? And is like the first movie in the in the actual MCU. So to say that he um, helped launch the MCU. That seems was like this, a, this was a poorly reviewed film, right? Dude, this is <laughs> one of... So is it... Is can, it I just, can I just show a clip you, from it real quick? Do you find it interesting that the one film, apparently, that he was involved in is probably by far the worst like, where's your algorithm on this one, dude? Can I, can I give you some comparison, Ethan? Even I don't like this movie. Oh, 26%. That's brutal. 26% yeah. on Rotten Tomato. That's his crown jewel. He established the MCU, apparently. This is the only evidence we can find to support that. There's a hunger for this character to come back. <laughs> <laughs> we got to revive Ghost Rider. Dude, you I'm really? Thor, <laughs> Thor 2 is often referred to as the worst Marvel movie and it's at 66 percent so this one is like well 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 they forget this one even they're like we don't even remember right well it's technically not even part of the mcu like dan said so it's wait wait a second isn't isn't ryan kavanaugh ghost riding right now he's all flamey oh okay okay boom. good reference boom just <laughs> i'll blood myself boom. so so as far as we Dude. can tell as far as we've been able to tell that's the only marvel movie that ryan's been involved in because uh, if you go to as far as I can tell, yes, uh, I was searching around for a while. I wasn't really finding anything. This is on the Marvel Wiki, and there's a page for Relativity Media. Is film production company just co-produced Ghost Rider? What a fucking loser! Did he produce the second one? Because that one got eighteen percent. 
No, it just says Ghost Rider. Mm -hmm. Dude, yeah. this man is trying to claim he created the entire Marvel <laughs> Universe because he made Ghost Rider. Well, if you go to Ryan Kavanaugh's IMDb page, you can see all the stuff he produced. Like, go back to that year and see what's there. So I want to make sure we get this right, because if we can actually definitively say that this is the only film he produced for Marvel, then this is the biggest L, I think, of all time. <laughs> yeah, I created Marvel. No, I created Marvel. I bought a ticket and watched Iron Man. That makes me as much responsible for the MCU as you. He's not even listed as a producer on Ghost Rider. H3, wait, is he credited on the H3 podcast? Is this what you <laughs> sent me? <laughs> One credit as self. <laughs> my bots, my paid bot army is out of control. I never sanctioned this. Joke, by the way, no bots are being paid. Thank you. It's kind of awesome. So apparently his only credit... Oh, that's his only credit since 2008, Cam said. 18. Yeah, thank you. 18. Man. That's embarrassing, bro. Ghost Rider. Well, I've got a bunch of memes here. Oh, Olivia, a new update. You found a Pinterest cross post? I did. So do you want to, you want to present to us? Sure. So... The website that this account that he follows comes from is called therandomvibes.com. And so I looked up this quote Here, that I, he posted on his on Instagram. Okay, so we're trying so this account that we suspect is Ryan on Pinterest follows one account. The random vibes, right? It's from the same website. It 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 pins photos from yes. Wait, it's he, on this he, he page. straight up screenshotted it. Yeah, that's what people. That's literally what people do. He took a shitty people. red screenshot, and may I remind? Okay, so so if you, this is that's him. He's scrapbooking his own shit. Oh, absolutely. Okay, now that we have like pretty good evidence connecting, put that back then. He's stealing it. The head of a major cutting edge new media platform has reposted in glorious 140p. You couldn't even <laughs> properly post a fucking screenshot. I mean, what the hell, bro? At least he cropped it before he reposted it. How did he make it so low res when he reposted <laughs> it? Like, how do you do that? I'm not even sure how you do that. Same thing as the YouTube video. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. The 144p YouTube video. <laughs> oh, right. You want to pull that up just to show the people? Co-founder of Triller. Which one was it? This is all of his videos. on. Oh, his, it's possible uh, he maybe removed it in response wait, to... Wait, he still has the Triller triad thing on his personal uh, YouTube Yeah, they're page. being sued for stealing the triad from someone. Oops. Sounds pretty bad. Anyway, let's move on. Um, so, Kavanaugh, Cav Cavs on Twitter, liking thirst trap posts of Noah Beck. Pretty weird. Noah Beck's like a young man. I don't know why he's liking thirst traps of Noah Beck, do you? Inappropriate. Don't uh, you think? so awkward. Well, it's, Noah Beck is, uh, was involved in Triller, yeah? In some yeah. capacity? But this is just some weird girl who's like, oh, Noah and glasses, thirst trapping for him. And he's like, yup. Wait, he liked it or retweeted it? No, he liked it. That is a little odd. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A little odd. It's an interesting one. <laughs> Cav Cav, who's so thirsty for Daddy Dana White's approval. By the way, this account, who I have to say, I don't know who the fuck is running it. I have no association <laughs> with this account. Before you try to accuse me of anything, Ryan. Ryan or Harvey is the name of it, and he's, this guy doesn't miss, man. Look at this meme he posted. Yeah, so Ryan posted this on his Instagram, trying to get the attention of Dana White. Triller Fight Club and Triad Combat kindly request your presence. Dear Dana White, since Fight Club has broken every UFC uh, viewership record, 
I thought perhaps you would want to see a proper production in action. We would be more than happy to arrange a tour. So he's trying to, you know, goof on Dana White, who basically, he's a fly compared to him, but. The city calls me every day, texts me every day. Please answer my call. Please talk to me. Why won't you talk? Just to be clear, this is actually Dana White talking about Ryan Kavanaugh. Somebody asked him about him. At a press conference. Yeah, yeah. and this is literally him talking about Ryan Kavanaugh. The city calls me every day me every day please answer my call <laughs> please talk to me why won't you talk to me because i don't give a fuck about you <laughs> oh my god D don't, don't even ask me about these idiots who gives a shit does anybody give a shit i guess they you do, do? No, I, I don't give a shit what they think you think i care what triller thinks what are you doing? I don't even know what you're doing. What is this? <laughs> Trailer reportedly sued by Data 500 fronted BYP Extreme for allegedly uh, for alleged Trigon ring ripoff. Thing you're trying to build. What are you doing? You know, and 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 why are you talking? What, what, what do I history. have to do with it? What do I have to do with it? Or, or my guys? Do your thing. <laughs> right, what are you doing? Fucking go away. Stop texting me. Stop calling me. <laughs> and stop fucking asking the media to ask me things. Okay? Beat it. Get lost. I wish Dana White or one of these other people from his previous lives would like reach out and pay for my lawsuit or something. So enough people that hate him in the world. It's like, wish sure. someone would back me the fuck up. I don't know why I have to fight this fight by myself, man. Like, damn. I smoke marijuana so I don't beat my wife and children. <laughs> right. That's Dana White, but. We still love him. <laughs> he was quoting somebody. Yeah. He was quoting somebody else. But you know what I mean? I feel like the we last... Need, we don't need Dana suing us now. No, I love Dana. <laughs> the last Don't time... say you love Dana either. Let's just... We're neutral on Dana. Uh, pay, just help me pay Brian Kavanaugh. <laughs> okay, got I'll, it. I got it. Him. Okay. In that case, we love you. The Dana. last time I got in a legal battle with Matt Haas, I feel like the whole internet supported me, and it was like a really beautiful thing. Now I feel like even more is on the line, and I just feel like I'm fighting this thing by myself, and it sucks. Yeah, I mean, you were a much smaller creator then, and you know, people. I think there was more of an underdog dynamic. Although that dynamic is still here because Ryan Kavanaugh is still it's like a billionaire, according to well, according whatever to article he's written. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but well, he just employed like the bit, the most famous defamation yeah, lawyer. lawyer in the country. Yeah. How big my hands look. Whoa. <laughs> Normal size can, by the way. Actually, this is a super large one. They started making like 20 ounces. And the chat is uh, reminding you that uh, that you do have a lot of people supporting you. Oh, that's, th I tr that's true. The Fooper Troopers have my back. And it's, especially when the third lawsuit was posted, it's really nice to see the amount of support we've been getting. That... It means so much. It's so nice to see. And that people are invested in this stupid little story that, like, some random nobody, you know, it's hard to get invested in this stuff, but I'm really glad to see people care. I think I'm mostly talking about media outlets and creators and stuff sure. like that. Yeah, yeah. It'd be nice to see, you know, somebody fucking rally around this case. It is so important. And I get that they're probably, you know, afraid to get involved. Matt Haas was a nobody. And Ryan Kavanaugh has a habit of suing and going after anyone that says anything about him. So true. Yeah. But like, damn, it just, it's, it's just, it feels bad to be, it, I mean, it's just, it's scary and it feels bad to be fighting it by myself in that regard. But all your guys' support, especially on, around this third one is just huge, huge, huge. I to thank you guys so much. It really does make me feel supported. So the, and thank you guys. The chat wants you to know that you don't have fans, you have family. 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 family, family, they were family. 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 Thank you guys. Yeah, I love all y'all. Thank you so much. And thank you for caring about this. You know, it's hard to care about someone else's problems when it doesn't even like directly affect you. You know, but it does affect us. Family. 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 But th this family. one is more impactful family. than the first one by a lot. I'm just telling you to any creator. Oh, yeah. Philly D. So the Hollywood Reporter reporter and Philly D asked me for comment, which I thought was good. Did anyone watch Philly D's coverage of it yet? Apparently it just dropped. 
The stop, chat was just saying. I gave him a really. I gave him a really long and detailed statement, and I asked him to please read it in full. So I'm curious if he did. I. It must have just dropped because on his. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah, you're in the thumbnail. Another one Rack for the one board, up. baby. Rack it up. Let's go. So I was happy to see Philly covering it. I was like, all right, and Hollywood Reporter, so hopefully. Well, he spent, uh, I'm looking at it, and according to timestamps, 10 minutes of the 17-minute uh, video is spent on the story, so. Well, well let's watch um, it and see. Um, but, okay, so we're getting to, well, actually, I want to watch, well, let's watch it at the end here because I have more to talk about. Um, here, basically, the Hollywood Reporter posted an article about this third lawsuit, and I'm like, finally, one of these guys is reporting on this shit. Um, Ryan Kavanaugh's new mind bender, when a lawsuit is not a lawsuit, and they're talking about this weird technicality where he's like, well, it was never filed, so it's defamation about the Ponzi one. Mm -hmm. A defamation case from the controversial entertainment veteran figures to explore a secret about the court system that hardly anyone knows about. <clears throat> so they go on to say, uh, basically, that there was a lawsuit by some media organization that pressured the legal system that they need to make lawsuits available to the press immediately. And so it created this weird dynamic where... The press gets the lawsuits before the actual attorneys do. Uh, let's turn to a defamation law quote lawsuit. Love that. Quote filed by Ryan Kavanaugh against the podcaster Ethan Klein. This is a, no ordinary case, and lawyers, reporters, and others would be wise to pay attention as it's headed towards exploring the quantum state of litigation. Before getting to what Kavanaugh alleges, it's necessary to introduce this controversial entertainment industry veteran, as well as discuss a quirk of the jury prudence of Los Angeles that hardly anyone knows about. Kavanaugh, in 2004, made a splash by founding an indie studio, Relativity Media, that had supposedly cracked the tough business of movie making, meaning he had a quantitative approach towards production, perhaps partly due to the success at the time of the movie Moneyball, Kavanaugh's method attracted interest. And the man had a lot of connections, too. Future U.S. Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin, good guy, by the way, good reputation, <laughs> was an investor. And for a brief period, he was also Relativity's co-chairman. You know what's so interesting about that is that he that gives him a direct tie into the Trump administration. Mm -hmm. And there has been these conspiracies that he bought Triller knowing that Trump was about to ban TikTok, that it was some weird. But this is all allegations, obviously, and and uh, speculation. <clears throat> Uh, was an investor and for a brief the company burned through hundreds of millions of dollars before one of the most notorious Hollywood bankruptcies ever. So there you go. That's your legacy, bro. Kavanaugh feuding with investors wound up on the cover of the Hollywood Reporter. Well, let's see what the cover was. Relativities, Ryan. I'm sorry. <laughs> Exclusive. Ryan Kavanaugh. Breaks silence, points fingers, an emotional post-bankruptcy interview. Alrighty. Since Relativity's bankruptcy, Kavanaugh has been involved in all sorts of projects, as well as legal entanglements. In 2017, he launched a new company, Proximity Media, along with this dude, Elon Spar. The endeavor, however, got off to an un unauspicious start when Kavanaugh and Spar started pointing fingers at each other over funding and secrets. Spar even accused Kavanaugh of operating a Ponzi scheme, which Variety picked up for a headline in its own story. This will become relevant later. More on what happened in a bit. But just know that Kavanaugh and Spar were able to find some sort of uh, resolution. Kavanaugh's Proxi Proxima then acquired a majority interest in Triller, a social media site that, among other things, has distributed pay-per-view boxing matches. 
Uh, when people started pirating those fights, Triller filed many copyright suits. One of the targets was Ethan Klein, whose H3 podcast used a clip of the Jake Paul fight. You see, someone who actually fucking, like, just that simple reporting. H3 used a clip. Thank you. When you read Ryan's press release, Ethan pirated the, the whole thing and caused m hundreds of millions in damages. Yeah, I used a clip. This has led to yet another fuel feud for Kavanaugh, one that has escalated over several months. Klein has attacked Kavanaugh merc mercilessly on his podcast. For example, just before Thanksgiving, he posted an episode titled Ryan Kavanaugh's Wikipedia is a Battlefield. In response, Kavanaugh filed more legal grenades for a tortoise interference lawsuit. Kavanaugh is now being represented by Thomas Clare, one of the country's most famous reputation lawyers. There you have it. Kavanaugh's latest complaint against Klein flags the podcast for repeatedly and relentlessly attacking and continuing attack Mr. Kavanaugh in a variety of ways, but specifically by republishing the defamatory and highly damaging accusations which they knew to be false. That Mr. Kavanaugh was accused of running a Ponzi scheme. I don't know that to be false. I only know that, like, again, to this day, it's like, I'm just reading the headline. I know you guys resolved behind the scenes, which I've stated. I only know what your previous partner said of you. Um, what's weird and meta is that he wrote this article the day the, the complaint was filed, and I didn't have the lawsuit yet, but he was quoting from the complaint, which I think was intentional by the author to do, like, this weird meta-analysis. Right. Later, Klein began selling T-shirts to fans with the slogan, Govern Yourself Accordingly, which depicts Mr. Kavanaugh and a criminal defendant in a courtroom doubling down on Klein's defamatory suggestion that again, I'm not. I'm not suggesting any. It says defamatory suggestion that Mr. Klein ran a cr criminal enterprise. That's a quote from his thing. But uh, I'm not implying that he ran a criminal enterprise. Of course not. When it comes to defamation law, blah blah blah. Anyway, they go on to talk about how Spar. Two years later, Spar submitted a complaint to the Los Angeles Superior Court against Ryan Kavanaugh. And Kavanaugh sub submitted his own against Spar, a very weird, weird thing to happen. Within hours, Kavanaugh's rep was calling media outlets and insisting that no lawsuit had actually been filed and that news stories on the matter were defamatory. Do you see what a weird litigious piece of shit this guy is? He files a lawsuit <laughs> and then his rep starts calling media outlets, insisting no lawsuit had actually been filed and that reports on it are defamatory. And the author says, I know because I was the recipient of one of these phone calls. Kavanaugh even put out a statement at the time accusing Variety and The Hollywood Reporter of having attempted to smear him by quoting from Parr's, Spar's seeming legal filings. You know. So then he goes on to explain how that happened and how it's super bizarre. And that's about it. I'm glad he's talking about it, though. But I, it just shows how, what a petty fucking weirdo he is that he files a lawsuit <laughs> and then immediately starts, e starts having his rep threatening news organizations to not talk about it or get sued. Yeah. Um, someone on the subreddit made a really great point about it that I thought was good. Uh, Kavanaugh, PSA, Kavanaugh's an elitist piece of shit. I know we're all here for goofs and gas, and I love the way Ethan's approached the situation in terms of poking fun at it, but I'm getting increasingly angry. I feel Ryan is the perfect example of, of a Hollywood elite doing essentially anything they want and coming out on top. I feel he started this lawsuit without knowing the previous legal battles that H3 has gone through and is now trying to take Ethan and Ela for everything they have because he's been challenged. It starts with monet... Uh, it started with monetary gain, but is now a pathetic attempt at saving his fractured ego. His recent Insta post bragging about suing, uh, about suing others. He's bragging about suing me. 
Fuck you, you entitled prick. I'm glad Ethan and his team seem to be standing their ground, calling out this nonsense and challenging a man who has likely gotten away with stunts like this time and time again over the years. Uh, exactly, you know. It's like this dude is used to threatening, doing whatever he wants without any recourse, and the only difference this time is that I'm standing my ground and I'm refusing to get bullied, and it's driving him crazy, and so he's not backing down. It's three lawsuits now. Three lawsuits. I have done nothing. I'm not suing anybody. I'm just defending myself and standing up for what's right. And talking some shit along the way. But there's nothing illegal about that. I'm not, bro, I'm literally just reading headlines that other people wrote. And the shit talking wouldn't happen if you weren't being sued. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Just a response. I'm not saying that this is a bad <laughs> thing. So we. We talk some shit on this show. I'm not talking shit about you are, it. You are defending your right as an American. Yeah. I'm not sh talking shit. You I'm literally shield, reading headlines of articles that are posted by other people and defending my right to fair use and free speech. There's if you want, shit all if, over if the you want to call that shit talking, then by all means. <laughs> we don't talk shit. We eat poop, Camp said. <laughs> According True. to Ryan Kavanaugh, I'm just eat. I got famous eating poop, whatever that means. <laughs> ha 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 ha. I'm shitting my basement. <laughs> Ryan Kavanaugh or the quartering? Suing me. I'm not taking a pause to shit all over the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's the best. Um, by the way, I don't know if this screenshot's real or not. And by the way, I do want to preface this by saying do not harass. Do not send him DMs. I don't condone this, in fact. I <laughs> well, then don't you? Um, well, well, I'm only it. showing this to show how desperate Ryan is for, I guess, dirt on me, but... Hi, Ryan. Ethan Klein recently tried to bribe people on his Discord to go to your social media accounts and lie about you. Would you like a screenshot of the message? Sure. Not sure if this is real or fake, but sure. So, okay. Baited. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking fuck. Ah! <laughs> Don't do this, guys. I just want to say that I don't condone uh, doing this. Um, there's been a lot of content coming out recently. Oh, yeah, Ryan Kavanaugh put a Ethan Klein section on his Instagram, apparently. So, <laughs> if you guys want to read. By the way, and it's ahead of anything else. Enter the triad. Snoop Dogg, Metallica, these are all big things for his company. Funny no, shit. number one, Ethan Klein. Love that. <laughs> Love that for him. Yeah, so basically, at this point, I prepared this huge statement for Philly D. And let's see if he actually read it. Oh, this was a really funny one. Me, when I read on Kavkav's article that Ethan is paying people to go to, uh... Does Ryan Kavanaugh look like Harvey Weinstein .com? Yeah, knowing I've been searching Ryan's name and spending time on the site every single day without compensation. You guys are getting paid? <laughs> 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 oh, shit. So funny. By the way, let's check in on that. Let's open an incognito tab. And type Ryan Kavanaugh. I mean, Google is obviously doing a value assessment on the website. And let's see. Oh, his article is doing well. So his, oh, wow. see, his article is, is rating above ours. Our website. Interesting. Wonder how that happened. Yeah, but I'm going to click this, spend some time on it. <laughs> I'll just leave it open as I... <laughs> as I... Uh, Watch Philly D's coverage. <laughs> Great choice, yeah. So let's see, Philly D. Okay, this is, so this is good, you know. This is, I'm going to like it. This is good. This is, Subscribe this, too. Th oh, this, wait, I'm logged in as you, bro. You subscribed. Hmm. Don't put, don't throw me under the bus. Well, I, no, I'm just saying subscribe. Like and subscribe. Dan be like, you don't even subscribe? I'm logged in as I, you. It was not an accusation. That's my account. By the way, what is that clothes I'm wearing? It looks good. Teddy Fresh? Teddy Fresh? Can you get that at TeddyFresh.com? Also, I like this image you used Wait. of Ryan. Is he that looked... photoshopped? <laughs> it looks like he has soy <laughs> eye. <laughs> I look good as hell, and he looks like soy eyed. 
Looks like he's going through some shit. Damn. Fourth lawsuit incoming. I have a soy allergy. I've never consumed soy. I'm not a soy boy. I don't appreciate your implication. <laughs> okay, well, at any rate, I'm just huge. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm just very happy to see Philly D mainstream coverage of this finally. You know, it's come long enough, so. so the new H3 defamation lawsuit is bigger than most realize. Okay, let's watch. Is it timestamp? Wow. Or it's right a... at the beginning. He didn't hit us with the sup. Where's the sup? Did he drop the sup? He opened with a wow. I guess that means sup, sup, serious. Sup, sup, All right, well, I'm excited to watch this, so. Thank you. Thank you. A crazy one for you, but before we jump into it, I just want to say today is my birthday. Two oh my God! Happy birthday! Oh, happy so. birthday! Hey, hey, Joe no. Biden just we love Philly D. We oh, dedicated his birthday, birthday up to you. Happy Legend. birthday! Happy, happy birthday. birthday! Happy birthday! For what version is this? Family, happy birthday! Family! Family! Yeah. Family! 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 <laughs> family, family, family. <laughs> Cam made this, by the way, and it fucking killed me yesterday. Future thumbnail. Oh, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> By the way, straight up, he's like, I don't look like that. They post photoshopped images of me to, to <laughs> defame me. <laughs> what do you mean you don't look like that? We made the edit so we could easily tell you apart from Harvey. That's so funny, bro. I love that image so much. <laughs> POV, Ryan Kavanaugh's whiskey bottle on Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, brutal. <laughs> All right, let's watch Philly. You have to like, comment, especially if you've never left a comment on this video before, and maybe even share today's show. Especially because a uh, number of the I'm sharing the fuck out of it. it. I'm watching 50,000 concurrent viewers right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm Philly. sharing this for you, Philly. Let's go. It actually could have huge consequences both nationally and internationally. But yeah, with that said, welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, you beautiful bastard, and let's just jump into it. And y'all, the first thing that we have to talk about today is this massive news around Ethan Klein, Thank aka you. H3 Productions, aka a guy who just seems to be a lightning rod for lawsuits. Yeah. If you don't By the way, Philly looks super skinny, doesn't he? he looks like really skinny good. Legend. Skinny legend. Skinny legend. He does skinny look like legend. a skinny legend. He looks really good. Love that man. Love how skinny he is. You don't know who Ethan Klein is, you love him, you hate him. It doesn't even matter because the story is bigger than just one man. This Thank is a story you. and a lawsuit that's about piracy versus fair use. It's Thank about you. defamation versus reporting. The, the legal limitations of what you can report when a lawsuit is not a lawsuit. So just like Ethan Klein's last fair use lawsuit, this could be precedent setting. So with that said, as far as who's on the- Okay. Thank you. Finally, somebody is like looking at this the right way. I mean, thank you, Philly. He had my back last time, or not, not like in a bite, like he understood the gravity of the lawsuit last time. And it looks like he's understanding the gravity of it this time. We love a skinny legend. Other end of this lawsuit, you have Ryan Kavanaugh, who, if you don't know, is a film producer and businessman as well, is a co-founder, majority holder, and triller. And yesterday, he filed a lawsuit against Ethan, though things actually started with a legal spat we covered in the past. For that being when Triller initially sued Ethan and H3 for airing a portion of its Jake Paul versus Ben Askren fight during one of its podcasts earlier this year. Triller had filed a massive lawsuit against several entities that had accused of pirating the fight at that time, but a court dismissed the majority of the defendants. Though, it did allow for Triller to refile against outlets individually. Yeah, what happened, just to be specific, H3. is that they threw every like a billion people in one lawsuit and the judge was like this is the dumbest shit i've ever seen it's an improper joinder i'm throwing it out entirely the judge was like you guys are idiots like the judge was so fucking harsh i wish we still had that judge but we got assigned to a different judge um nothing wrong with our judge though not not to not to you know say anything bad about her she's she seems to be smart and doing a good job but um um so what happened was the judge dropped it and then they only refiled against us, so explain that shit. And that lawsuit alleged copyright infringement, among other claims. At that time, Ethan hit back saying that his inclusion of the fight should fall under fair use, which then leads us to yesterday. Ryan Kavanaugh wrote an essay titled The Dark Side of the Power of Social Media, explaining more about his recent lawsuit and why he's saying that he filed it. There, we saw Ryan repeat claims that Ethan pirated and broadcasted that fight to millions of people, resulting in hundreds of millions of dollars in lost sales for Triller while Ethan profited. Also saying that Ethan initially seemed willing to settle, but then, quote, against all common legal practices, rather than negotiating in good faith, he disclosed his views 
views on the suit and the terms of the discussed settlement on his podcast to millions of viewers and further disparaged Triller. Ryan going on to claim that this was a bad faith tactic in violation of litigation laws. And all of that is kind of an explanation of the first part of the story, but then it moves from a piracy issue to a defamation issue. Because from there, Ryan claimed that Ethan has posted video after video attacking and slandering me personally, despite the fact that while I am a shareholder and co-founder, I am not Triller. Right, among other things, accusing Ethan of trying to use his video titles to optimize search results so that his videos show up when someone searches the name Ryan Kevin. Literally just put his name in the title, but <laughs> sorry, I just... Ryan adding that Ethan's Check followers have amplified the attacks. Ryan also specifically alleging that despite the fact that he has never met Ethan, Ethan has posted more than eight podcasts disparaging him with those podcasts including false and harmful information. Ryan also pointing to a website Ethan made that compares him to Harvey Weinstein and then claimed that Ethan sent paid traffic to push disparaging articles to the top of Google search results about him, <laughs> saying that he's encouraged H3 fans to attack him online and threaten his family. Ryan additionally brought up a Variety article that Ethan has referenced in the past with a headline that says Ryan was accused of running a Ponzi scheme. But Ryan arguing that Ethan is bringing up this article in bad faith because an update in the story notes that the situation was solved and that the complaint was never intentionally filed. Ryan also accused Ethan of making other defamatory remarks like claims that Ryan has not properly paid his employees or nanny and that he's gotten two DUIs, which Ryan says is false. With Kavanaugh also alleging that Ethan paid Wikipedia editors to quote, destroy his page with negative additions, started a Reddit thread for people to plan attacks against him and gloat about their successes and caused his followers and paid bots to give Such the Triller app a bad online bro. rating. With Ryan saying, all of this amounts to textbook malicious behavior intended to harm me and Triller. This leaves me with no choice but to sue. One malignant internet personality with a large following, the equivalent of an angry child with a loaded gun, can cause disproportionate harm to anyone using lies, slander, and SEO, and suffer few, if any, consequences. Now, I understand that is a lot. It's kind of this shotgun blast of accusations. See, the thing is, like, only hit on so I'm glad that Philly reached out to me for an argument, because even if you're familiar with it, if you read all that, you might, like, even if you're partial towards me, you'd be like, that sounds like he's gone, he's done too much. Mm -hmm. He's gone too far. He's brought this on himself, and he's got to deal with the consequences. The truth is that everything he's saying is totally fucking fabricated. It's not what happened. So I'm, I'm glad he reached out. Let's see what he does with my comment. So many things, and more could even be on the way, but I will link to the full article down below so you can see every detail as he explained it. But of course, in a situation where we're talking about a lawsuit, right, I just explained the accusations from one side, what does the other side think? And so with that, I reached out to Ethan Klein for a comment or response regarding the accusations or any of this in general, and he gave a lengthy response. With Ethan starting off by saying, Ryan Kavanaugh's first malicious lie is that he claims I pirated his event. Fair use is at the heart of this lawsuit, <laughs> the same as with our first is. lawsuit. You <laughs> is that a gag? It's pretty awesome. I We're mean, talking about legal stuff. Yeah, of course I'm right. I'm the judge uh -huh. and the jury. My wife's the bailiff. Let's go. This is at the heart of this lawsuit, same as with our first lawsuit. Wait, Use I'm going to go back a little bit. I don't want to miss a second of my, critical my statement that I crafted and lovingly. By saying, Ryan Kavanaugh's first malicious lie is that he claims I pirated his event. Fair use is at the heart of this lawsuit, same as with our first lawsuit. We used a short clip of the event during an extremely critical commentary during a three-hour podcast. Ryan Kavanaugh tries to blame me for his event being widely pirated, which is pure defamation. We didn't even react to the event until days after it was streamed on pay-per-view. If he cared about pirates, why did he drop all of his other lawsuits against actual pirates but only kept the one against me. Ethan going on to accuse Ryan of targeted legal harassment, asking why his wife's Teddy Fresh brand is listed in the suit when he says it has nothing to do with the case at hand. Ethan also denying that he told his fans to harass Ryan online, claiming that he's actually done the opposite on multiple occasions. Then he brought up a series of articles that address some of the specific accusations Ryan made, including the variety situation we mentioned, with Ethan claiming that he made it clear that the accusation was retracted, adding that if Ryan, quote, has a problem with the article, take it up with Variety, one of the most trusted news sources in entertainment, not me. Ethan then addressing Ryan's claims that he was spreading false information regarding DUIs and paying employees, with Ethan arguing that he was just referencing information made available in articles by well-regarded news sources, pointing to three New York Times articles from 2008 that say that Ryan was charged for drunk driving in 2006 and was arrested for the same thing again in 2008, also sharing a Vanity Fair article that brings up the same arrests. And regarding the accusation about Ryan not paying his nanny, Ethan pointed to an article from Fox San Diego that says that Ryan's former nanny sued him for $175,000 in lost wages after she was abruptly fired in 2020. That reportedly just two months into a contract that was meant to last over a year, with Ethan in writing. Again, I am not creating any of these claims, but merely reading what has already been published by well-respected news sources. How is that defamation? Regarding the accusations that Ethan sent bots to give Triller negative reviews, Ethan said that Ryan is solely blaming him when other big influencers have been critical of the app as well, including Noah Beck, a Triller advisor and shareholder who made a TikTok complaining about how Triller's camera is flipped, with Ethan claiming that he's only told his fans to give honest and genuine reviews. Ethan also going on to share a Hollywood Reporter article where an investor reportedly told a judge, in a town full of scam artists, posers, false prophets, and flimflam men, Ryan C. Kavanaugh is in a Hollywood class by himself. Ethan also linking to articles from Variety and Deadline that say a judge found 
Ryan had fabricated a memo which included false sexual harassment claims against an executive at his previous production company, with Ethan closing his statement to us by saying, Ryan Kavanaugh is a business elite who is used to suing, harassing, and breaking the law with no consequences. He wields the legal system like a malignant tyrant, uses it to silence his critics, and now to stifle fair use, something we all on YouTube should care about. With Ethan also addressing the entire situation with Ryan on Twitter, writing, Ryan Kavanaugh is trying to get my channel banned from YouTube, a powerful media person who has gone to every length to destroy me for criticizing him. Everyone needs to pay attention now. Not only is fair use on the line, but the powerful trying to shut down channels for criticism. With him then pointing to a Wikipedia user who he thinks might be Ryan, saying that the user admitted to sending legal notices to YouTube and Twitch to get H3H3 banned. And in that same Twitter thread, Ethan shared what he called a threatening Instagram DM that Ryan allegedly sent him, which shows Ryan laying out some of the accusations we just mentioned and warning Ethan to stop. So you have all of that, but then there's also an aspect of the story that I feel like is getting overlooked because obviously there's a lot of big accusations being thrown around, a lot of drama, but it was hit on really well by Eric Gardner and The Hollywood Reporter who explained, a defamation case from the controversial entertainment veteran figures to explore a secret about the court system that hardly anyone knows about. I remember that Variety article that both Ethan and Ryan have mentioned? So as Gardner and The Hollywood Reporter explain, about a decade ago, an entity called Courthouse News Service began suing local court officials around the nation for not providing immediate or near immediate online access to court filings. And adding, this service experienced some success, making the argument that the First and Fourteenth Amendment required nothing short of transparency. And as a result, the lawsuit Angeles Superior Court System opened a media portal for reporters. But Gardner going on to explain, this is where it gets problematic, noting it takes a bit of time for court filings to be processed. Lawsuits are indexed and assigned. And for the few hours it takes for this to happen, reporters get access to what the LA Superior Court calls, quote, unfiled complaints. With the court even stamping the words unfiled on every pages of these filings. With Gardner then going on to ask and answer the question, what would happen if a lawyer submitted a complaint into the system and then came to a quick settlement before the complaint got indexed? Explaining that's what happened two years ago. Explaining that in 2017, Kavanaugh launched a new company, Proxima Media, and along with an individual named Elon Spar, he pursued a new entertainment stock exchange. But saying this then led to Kavanaugh and Spar pointing fingers at each other over funding and secrets. But then reporting within hours of submitting the complaints, Kavanaugh's rep was calling media outlets and insisting that no lawsuit had actually been filed and that news stories on the matter were defamatory. With Gardner noting, I know because I was the recipient of one of those phone calls. And reporting that Kavanaugh even put out a statement at that time accusing Variety and The Hollywood Reporter of having, quote, attempted to smear him by quoting from Spar's seeming legal filings. But then adding that Kavanaugh never did sue The Hollywood Reporter nor Variety over the stories about his tussle with Spar, saying whether he was satisfied by the clarifications appended to the articles or cowered by the admonishment that fair reporting privilege would cover these stories, he backed off. And potentially related to that situation or now Ethan, Gardner writing that when it comes to defamation law, most states, including California, have a defense known as fair reporting privilege which basically means that anyone is free to talk about judicial and other governmental proceedings without fearing liability for repeating allegations made there. The only caveat is that the report has to be both a fair and true account of the public proceeding, and noting the media relies mightily on this privilege. And they're noting the example of how BuzzFeed beat defamation suits over its publication of the infamous Trump dossier. So yeah, like I said, at the beginning of this story, a lot of stuff at play here, and depending on how things go, potentially massive consequences. But for now, we're gonna have to wait to see what happens, though. I mean, this is a developing story. Even right before I uploaded today's show, I saw Ethan Klein going live addressing this matter, so we may see even more information, more updates. But while we wait to see what happens from here, I do want to pass the question off to you. What do you, what are your you guys think? <laughs> okay, so, I mean, pretty good. Uh, he gave my statement a fair shake, but it's like... It's like, okay, who cares about the, the technicality of if it was filed or not? I have nothing to do with the Variety article that was written. If you don't like the article, tell Variety to take it down. I can read a fucking headline. Um, anyway, I wish, I, 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 I get it, but I wish that, uh, I'd like to see a stronger stance from Philly, but it's his birthday, and we love him, and he looks skinny and healthy, and we love that for him. <laughs> Skinny legend. Skinny legend. Happy birthday, too. You know, because at least he's covering it, you know. I, I, I'll say that. No, you know what? I, I'm happy. It was good. He's covering it. I think that's great. I think as long as more people know about it, the better. Because the facts and every, everything's on our side. I mean... And it's all developing. And, uh, I mean, uh, you didn't even get the actual lawsuit until right before we went live. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean... Yeah, it's still this the, is all, but this yeah, is all I playing mean, out in honestly, real time. I, 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 should, I shouldn't complain. I think Philly did a great job. He represented me well, and um, he covered it, you know, which was awesome. But I do long for those days when he was like, fuck Matt Haas. 
this guy is trying to ruin YouTube. Because <laughs> the same is true. I understand being more more hesitant to fuck with. Oh well, yeah, nobody wants to get fucking wrath of Kavanaugh on their ass. So. But okay, happy birthday, Philly! Thanks for covering the story. We love you, legend. Skinny. He does look like he he looks good though, for real. It's hot. Let me read some of the comments. Yeah, Ryan Ryan is the definition of petty. I agree. Sound like Ryan has never really heard of this really cool thing called the First Amendment. Thank you. Fucking exactly. Shout out to Gid. Well, as my lawyer stated in one of the responses, which was awesome, was free speech for me and not for thee. He loves the First Amendment when it comes to his own speech. Thank you for reporting on the H3 lawsuit. It's important. It's not getting enough coverage. Thank you. Well, thank you. That's nice. I'm glad to see the comments and people uh, rallying and support. So, what? and thank you to Philly. Go. Actually, do you, I'll read the uh, the statement because which I don't have access to. Great. I have to give myself access. Give yourself permission. Because I wanted to read it in full. He actually, he didn't even read my favorite line. It was a long statement. I don't. I was going to be surprised if he I read thought, that in you full. Know, I thought it was good. I thought he would like it. <laughs> I think he uh, presented the... Yeah, I agree. I'm the happy. Best, the best nuggets. Well, I'm happy I took the time to actually source everything because it's like, look, these are all reported. And I'm glad he showed it all, too. He's like, yeah, the New York Times reported this guy was drunk driving. So... Oh, fuck. I don't know why I shared it with your email. Uh-huh. Share. It's not... Let me try again. Why is it not working? I shared it with you. It's actually shared with everybody. Wait. Oh, fuck. Hang on, guys. Bear with me here. Um, I got air. it. I got it. I got it. I know dead air. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Dan, you got anything? Wait, I don't even have access to it. How do I not have access to it? <laughs> what? Dude. <laughs> How do I not have access to my own damn document? That I cannot help you on. You know, while we wait, I could show this to the audience. No one believed that eat. I cannot believe what's happening. Yeah, Eby's chewing on a raw potato over here. What the He's hell? He's like an apple. Hell yeah, brother. What the hell are you doing I mean, over why? there? Such yeah, a why? Yeah, why? I've just I've always snacked on it since I was a kid, and no one... I didn't know this was weird till like, a few months ago when you guys were like, Wait. that is the most... Isn't it too hard to eat? Like, like I'm chewing it fine. Huh. Wait, isn't there something bad about eating a raw potato? I've, I've read that. Yeah. I turned There's out okay. There's something bad with it. There's something in it that's bad. I don't want to scare you, though. But we'll Google that. Fact check that. Raw potatoes are more likely to cause digestive issues. Do you have digestive issues, Avery? No. Starch. Raw and cooked potatoes can be enjoyed in moderation. I'm not seeing any, like, immediate red flags on it. I don't know. I just feel like it'd be boring. Well, yeah, I thought... I mean, that's... No, I like it with some salt. It's good. I just didn't realize how loud it was until mm. every bite so. Olivia was looking over at me. <laughs> the potato is a loud food. You got chips, you got raw potato. It's, it's a cruncher. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a cruncher. So true, actually. Yeah, I guess the raw potatoes are not you guys, necessarily right? inherently toxic, and chances are you'll be fine consuming one. There are a number of reasons why eating an uncooked potato isn't great for your body or your taste buds. Well, that's just your fucking opinion, myrecipes.com. Fuck Where off. the fuck is this article? <coughs> I wrote it last night in my email. Can you see what email it's owned by? Maybe you shared it in the in WhatsApp. Maybe we can find it that way. This is so weird. Like, it's got to be. I just asked for access, so we should send an email. Oh, maybe it's the podcast. Uh, Maybe I was logged in as the podcast and wrote it there. Here's uh, some more potato ASMR while you guys wait. Uh, maybe we can read those big donations. Oh yeah, go for I it. That I sent in after our shots. Oh, okay. that's a better idea, look. There some has been big some, ones. some big juicy one. Ian McIntyre. McIntyre. Oh, McIntyre. 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 Oh, well, it's just M C, not M A C. Anyways. Uh, after giving us five years of free entertainment through the Haas suit, 
pregnancies, COVID, and now this, it's our privilege to help you fight this one, uh, this one-star harassment suit. Hmm. Thanks, Ethan, Hila, and the whole issue team for making us laugh through hard times and sticking up to rich, to this rich douche. Bless heart and a $200 donation. Thank you, bro. 200 fucking bucks. Thank you, bro. Thank you so uh, Charlie much. Charlie P. Pluth? I don't think Pluth. So. Pluth. Pluth. <laughs> Pluth. Wait, Where the fuck is isn't that a famous Pluth. person, Charlie yeah. Pluth? Yeah. Wait, who's Charlie Pluth? The yeah. singer. The he, one who was mean that's to... That's not uh, him, is it? To Dax Flame. To no, Dax, probably. yeah. Uh, yeah, he's the one that Dax wanted to beef with. Yeah. Is that that's not the real Charlie Pooh, no. is it? No, no, no. Okay. You mean who commented? No, you're like, no. <laughs> no of course you not. said this comes from Charlie Pooh. No, it's actually comes from Charlie P, and I was speculating okay, what the last right, name would be. All right. Pluth. Not Charlie Pooh. Pluth. <laughs> Alright, Charlie Pluth says, uh, here's a hundred dollars. Use this for the legal fund. Please let us donate to a GoFundMe to fight this bully. I don't think that's gonna happen after <laughs> the drama of the last time. <laughs> I'd love to, but I think I got killed. Until last year, people still thought Ethan uh, took that money, and I'm, I don't think it was ever really clear to me what they thought you did with it. They thought that I... Didn't. I don't know, because I clearly paid for the lawsuit. Right, yeah. It's just, like, I clearly fought an expensive lawsuit to its conclusion. The whole the whole situation never actually made sense if you spent longer than a second thinking about it. Uh, Doherty Gusev... Gusevsky. Gusevsky. Gusevsky yeah. Dordy Gusevsky. Yeah, Sorry. Gusevsky. Sorry, Dordy. Uh, two, another $200. Zach, hit the war horn. Foot <laughs> soldiers are going to war. Zach, for 200 bucks. And by going to war, I assume he means just watching and enjoying the podcast. Metaphorical war. And not actually doing any uh, acts or acts. anything or harassing because we don't know harassing. No lying, will not no botting. We don't do that. So when you say go to war, I say watching the podcast enthusiastically, and I love that. And thank you so much for your support. That's that's the only support we need. Uh, what's an AED uh, when it comes to? Why can't I find this article, you guys? Currency. This is driving me insane. <laughs> Isn't that like a? I swear I shared uh, United it Arab Emirate uh, Dur Durhams. Okay. Well, they donated 369.99 of those, you, which is $100, and they just said, R I'm RK. Oh, he's RK? The mod? Yeah. Oh, shit. Well, thank you. Thanks for the 100 bucks. <laughs> Do you have your passports? Oh, no. Did you get your shots? No. No. I got it. No, why are we doing this? Did you have your passports? Did you get your shots? Girl, would you like to come back with Rob to America? Hold on, I have a very important time-sensitive donation. America. Ron Potatoes killed my entire killed an entire family passports? in Russia. Did you get your AB. shots? Girl, would you, you like them, to come back with Rob? Please make sure they're prepped with to peace America. and love. Of course. Thank you for the I'm immune. I've been having it since I was a kid. Okay. You have your passport? Did you get your shots? Girl, you, would Ethan. you like to we come all have back, back in with this. Rob? Can I request that you take me out to the lake, will you, Ethan? Uh, 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 Ethan. Yeah, uh, uh, you got a request? Yeah, to America. To take Sorry Fuego yeah, out on the lake. Uh, uh, to America. Sorry Fuego. Asking you to get taken out on Damn, what the, the lake. fuck is going on? Keep living your truth. Keep singing. How dare you it. interrupt me? It's my fave. So. What is this one? I can't find the document. I'm, I don't know. Did you, fi did you figure it you out? Sent it, you sent it in WhatsApp yesterday. I put that in a doc. I don't know if you had revisions to it after you sent it in the WhatsApp, but. It, it doesn't open for you, I'm assuming. Can you post the link? In yeah, the WhatsApp? it's in... No, it, it's in, in, look in Discord. Discord. Here. I posted it. I'm oh. going to post it in the bottom of the doc right now. Well, I mean, I go. have the doc. The doc that we've been using Wait, all day, it? I put it in there. Oh, so what the fuck did I link? Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. This is the text from the WhatsApp. So I don't know if you made any... Oh, I see what you did. Yeah. 
because I did change it a bit. Actually, here. I sent his... I sent a girl from Philly D the final, so I'll just post it in there. It's just the formatting was super weird, because I like posted it to Twitter DMs. <laughs> uh, Jesse Nelson donated one hundred dollars and said, "To war in Minecraft." Okay, good in Minecraft. Exactly. Yep. We're gonna bit. We're gonna burn his vi Minecraft village to the ground. Thank you so much for your support. The thing is, like, I just, the thing is about doing, like, a GoFundMe or something is, like, I just, I'm very, I'm rich. I mean, so, it looks a little fucking dumb, doesn't it? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Uh, somebody donated five bucks and said, Cav Cav produced, I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry, but is accusing Ethan of homophobia and with the thinky face. Uh, hmm, I haven't seen that movie. Is it homophobic? <laughs> you, you, know, you could say that. Yeah, yeah. Also, he's fucking friends with Steve Mnuchin. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, okay, wait. I pr I, I forwarded you guys the email of the final version, and then if oh you boy, this better be worth if it. You for can, all the trouble we've gone through, this better be good. And Ooh. then if you could paste it over the um, over this, then it'll be ready. I'm glad he called out Noah Beck's criticism of the app, though, Philly D. That was great. So you want me to just put it in your? Uh... Just paste it over this document that. That the one that love made? Yes. Okay, there you go. All right, great. So I'm just going to put this document up. Here we go. So we're going to have to put this statement up on... You see how the formatting's crazy? Like, this is a URL. I don't know why the text got, like, one. It's, like, normal, and then one te one font size. <laughs> I don't know. What <laughs> like, that. what the fuck is that shit? Every time I posted a link. Look at this shit. For their dog. Like, what, what the fuck is this? Yeah, <laughs> it works. It's just like, what happened? At the bottom, it gets super scuffed. Let me see. <laughs> it gets what? Huge. Oh yeah. It's so this huge. this is what I sent them. I wish he would have form. He would have helped me out with the formatting, Philly, because I saw he just strictly <laughs> screenshotted it. But I wasn't gonna. I can't. Anyway, here I'm gonna read it. Okay. Okay. We should put this statement up on. Um, does Ryan Kavanaugh look like Harvey Weinstein? Can we keep this formatting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <I'm> <laughs> You're going to preserve the formatting? <laughs> well, this I is can. a serious statement. <laughs> All right. First, Ryan Kavanaugh's, Ryan Kavanaugh's first malicious lie is that he claims I pirated the event. Fair use is at the heart of this lawsuit, same as with our first lawsuit. We use a short clip of the event during an extremely critical commentary during a three-hour podcast. Ryan Kavanaugh tries to blame me for his event being widely pirated, which is pure defamation. We didn't even react to the event until days after it was streamed on pay-per-view. If he cared about pirates, why did he drop all of his other lawsuits against actual pirates but only kept the one against me? Why is he suing Teddy Fresh, a separate and unrelated business entity? The answer is obviously targeted legal harassment. He claims I have encouraged my followers to attack him on social media, something I have routinely discouraged. I have on many occasions told our audience not to harass him or engage with him on social media. Ryan Kavanaugh claims that I have propped up a defamatory article that is debunked in the title. That is a lie. Here I link to the, I think this is the, the Ponzi, yeah, article. I said, where is it debunked in the title? His partner retracted the statement, which we have made it clear many times on the podcast. If he has a problem with the article, take it up with Variety, one of the most trusted news sorts in, in entertainment, not me. He claims I've lied about him not paying his nanny or getting DUIs. I have not made these claims. I am reading them from well-sourced and respected articles. Does he not find the New York Times reputable? Reputate, reputable? And I'm glad he posted these. That was awesome, you know. Financer in Hollywood strikes deal in DWI. That was awesome that he showed the headlines of these, you know. Catch and release, yes, says Money Man. Here's the title, Hollywood Financier is Arrested Again, New York Times. So again, huge shout out to Philly D for posting these, because that, that's important. What about Variety Fair? There's also the... This Vanity is a, Fair? This is a quote from Vanity Fair. There's also the matter of two driving arrests he has accrued since driving... Since he has accrued to 2006, both suspected of DUIs, the second while he was still on probation for the first. To quote the article, 
Mr. Cavanaugh was arrested by a sheriff's department officer who accused him of driving under the influence of alcohol and being involved in a hit and run accident. That's Vanity Fair. Here, this article here. Is that defamation? To read a fucking article? The Theory of Relativity by Vanity Fair. He has a problem with their reporting. Take it up with them, not me. What about Fox News? Hollywood executives sued by babysitter and wage spat. Again, Fox News. I'm reading headlines. Again, I'm not creating any of these claims, but merely reading what has already been published by well-respected news sources. How is that defamation? Ryan Kavanaugh claims that I have been paying hordes of editors and bots. Every negative comment, any bad review, he blames solely on me and not the cause of his own poor behavior. He claims I am solely responsible for every one star review Triller has received, despite one of Triller's stars and equity holders, Noah Beck, making a TikTok complaining about the app being flipped. This video was posted to the Triller app itself. Yo, Triller, my thing's flipped. The now infamous. My camera's like flipped around right now, but look. I'm so, I'm trying to, ugh, it's so awkward. What is it doing? Hey guys, like look, it's, when I put it this way, it's Oh, goes, I see it, yeah. It's weird, it's like mirrored. And should I head all? Yeah. Good stuff. <clears throat> Great app you got there. You know, I have repeatedly mentioned to only give honest and genuine reviews of Triller. Yet the biggest hyperbole in his article comes in this line. Ryan Kavanaugh is the 26th highest grossing movie <laughs> producer. While that may be true, who is keeping track? He fails to mention that he utterly bankrupted his production company, Relativity Media. See, that's the line he took wah, out. Wah, wah. Here's a quote for you from Hollywood Reporter. And again, I'm super proud of Philly and happy that he read this. Hedge fund investor Carrie Metz tells a bankruptcy judge in a town full of scam artists, posers, and false prophets, and flim-flam men, Ryan Kavanaugh is a Hollywood class by himself. Hollywood reporter. Ryan Kavanaugh is lampoon lampooned as relativity investors seek fraud lawsuit alive. Ryan Kavanaugh and his executive once forged a document claiming that his then-president sexually harassed people so he could fire him without paying him severance. The judge found that it was complete, completely falsified, and a forensic analysis revealed the last person at the document was a user named CavCav. Variety. Deadline. This was reported in Variety and Deadline. Is, the, the, is it now defamation to read an article? Ryan Kavanaugh is a business elite who's, who's used to suing, harassing, and breaking the law with no consequence. He wields the legal system like a malignant tyrant and uses it to silence his critics. Now, to stifle fair use, something we should all on YouTube care about. So, okay, he, he read a lot of it. He did a good job representing me. So I'm very thankful. So give, birth, so give Philly D some birthday love. We love that man. Skinny. Oh, I have this website open still? Shit. So, I, I think I figured out where he was getting the 26 highest grossing movie producer of all time thing. There is a separate listing on um, the numbers, that same website, for top grossing executive producer. Stan Lee? At, at the domestic box office. So, this is like a very specific. Beta. Yeah, and it's, wait, is is they beta. calling Ryan a beta? Beta. Well, um, that's kind of in, that's but here's what but here's what's weird. He's number twenty eight, not number twenty six. Liar. See. So I mean, maybe there's another even more specific, like top grossing executive producers at the domestic box office with red hair. Yeah. That mm. he may. He might be. He might even be, be, be number three on, on that. One. Yeah, he could be right up there. Well, Ron Howard. For sure. Is more exactly. So you wouldn't even stop so, that one. Yeah. How about executive producers with red hair that people sometimes confuse with Harvey Weinstein based on appearance alone? That occasionally. He might be three on that. That one. occasionally operate a motor vehicle under the influence of. In, oh, Allegedly. Well. <laughs> Allegedly. Dan, I think a Jerry Bruckheimer would also be on that list. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah, so you might even top that one. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Stan Lee's number one. That's crazy. Like. Okay. Well, again, that, tells, that just goes to show you how he's listed legit. as an exec producer on anything that he created, which is like most of the Marvel universe. So I'm so. saying that just goes to show you how legit this uh, list is. Yeah. Stan Lee. Well, heard of. All right. Well, that's basically the show. 
Um, let me go to the comp. Let me read some comments and maybe there's interact with the the Fooper Troopers. Yeah, I just want again want to thank all you guys for coming and supporting us and you know caring about this because it's not an easy thing to to get involved in and I just really appreciate y'all. Really, um, people are spamming. Uh, in fact, they just got timed out for spamming. Sorry about that. Don't spam. But I did see your message that um, that they really wanted us to see. The Deaf Noodles uh, covered this story as well. On oh, the show fuck today, it. I'll, so. I'll watch it. Deaf oh, and noodles. by the way, people are saying um, to get Emily on. I think she's going to call in on Friday to go over the yeah, actual complaint. Yeah. It made more sense for there to actually be a legal document <laughs> to, uh, to look people at. People are shouting, Sean! <laughs> <laughs> a lot of that. Thank you guys for all the love. I, it means so much that you guys are here supporting us and the most important battle of my life, I would say. Yeah. This is everything. I mean, everything's on the line. I stand to lose everything. And YouTube, fair use, stands to die on this fucking hill. <laughs> is that, um, is that Def's? Yeah. Okay, great. Let's see what Def's got to say about it. Wait, when did this come out? Nine hours ago. Oh. Sue it again. Yeah, Ethan sue it again. You can always blame the haters for this. Anyway, moving on to Ethan Klein, who is once again getting sued by Triller's Ryan Kavanaugh. Now, Ryan shared two screenshots of legal filings uh, on his Instagram showing that he is uh, currently suing uh, Ethan and Ethan's production company for defamation. And Ryan also published this article discussing the situation. The dark side of the power of social media. Why I, Ryan Kavanaugh, sued Ethan Klein and his H3 podcast. Today, I sued Ethan Klein. He has lied to his followers and the public and profited from it. I was left with no choice but to do exactly what he has told his millions of fans I did prior. Sue him. Ah, uh, yes, folks. The only way to resolve any kind of dispute is to take it straight to court and spend an exorbitant amount of money on something absolutely frivolous. In fact, the more lawsuits you file and the more frivolous they are, the better it is. Anyway, folks, this appears to be the third lawsuit that Ryan has filed against Ethan and the H3 podcast. The first one being for copyright, where Ryan claims that Ethan and the podcast allegedly pirated the live stream, which if any of you have watched H3's broadcast about that fight, not only was it days after Thank the fight you. actually happened, but it was completely under fair use because they were just reacting and commenting. That's all you gotta say. That's Thank it. Thank you for saying that, you know what I mean? Dennis. Like, there's Dennis. no there's no need for, like, fence-sitting, I feel like. It's, like, it's obviously doo-doo dog shit. On the clips from the fight. Ryan Kavanaugh just filed his third lawsuit against me. Dude is reaching Scientology level of legal harassment, and I'm getting so over it. I mean, at this point, the guy must just love to burn money, because I don't understand how anybody loves to could burn just my keep money. filing lawsuits like this. Ryan Kavanaugh's trying to get my channel banned from YouTube, a powerful media person who has gone to every length to destroy me for criticizing him. Everyone needs to pay attention now. Not only is fair use on the line, but powerful trying to shut down channels for criticism. Now, Ethan is referring to something that Ryan Kavanaugh wrote in his Instagram story which said h3 productions needs to stop harassing harming and attempting to destroy other people's lives spreading false and malicious lies unfortunately it looks like i'm going to have to be the one to stop him i believe within a month his channel will be banned from youtube now how much of a bitch do you have to be <laughs> to pick a fight with someone and then resort to trying to silence them Thank when they you, start bro. responding and standing up for themselves Thank i mean you. i've lost my twitter account i've been there there's no reason for me fucking losing my Twitter account to this fucking day. I've actually spoken to Twitter employees and they don't even know why the fuck my Twitter account was taken down. Now I have my suspicions, so trust me. I know a bitch move when I see one. This was absolutely fucking Luke. Well stated. Well stated. Deaf noodles. The dude knows how to spit facts only. No printers allowed. Who claims to be Ryan Kavanaugh said he has sent legal notices to YouTube and Twitch to get me banned. This person also said a third lawsuit would be filed this week, which leads me to believe it is actually Ryan. How is it possible that this guy can't stop snitching on himself? Ryan also sent me Good this question. threatening DM on Instagram. Ethan, I am not sure why you have decided to take it upon yourself and your show to malign attack, slander, and defame me. I do not know you. I also don't know why you're spending thousands of dollars to have thousands of dummy accounts post fake statements about me. I can't, folks. I'm just exhausted <laughs> at this point. Now, power that. cleanser. Yeah, okay. Love it. Um, thank you. 
Yeah, I mean, on one hand, like, doing a GoFundMe would be awesome because it would just piss him off to no end, knowing he, like, I wasn't even spending my own money. But on the other hand, people like Keemstar will make the whole thing not worth it. They'll turn it into a whole <laughs> controversy yeah. and just make me regret ever even uh, accepting help from you guys. Which is why selling merch is probably the best way. Selling merch and just continue to watch. And support yeah, the show. And watch, support, Be a member. Obviously. Being a member helps. Being a member is awesome. Yeah. You know, um, buying Teddy Fresh is awesome. Donated, donated, uh, donated one thousand and ninety NOK. Is that uh, Norwegian? Norwegian? Should uh, be around hundred bucks. Thank you, Alexander. This is yeah, a little something know, for the defense fund. The memes was flow. The memes, my man. Must. Whoa! Keep the memes hit the floor. The memes hit the floor. <laughs> oh, hundred twenty bucks. What a leggy. What a leggy. Yeah, I'm not going to do the GoFundMe. It's just, it's going to be very regrettable. It's going to turn into a whole shit show of all these shit tier commentary channels talking about what a greedy piece of shit I am and stuff. It's not worth it. Took, took years to uh, finally Murderer. <laughs> get people we to shut the new, fuck uh, up about the original one. I know, dude. We should do a new merch drop specifically for this, but supporting Teddy Fresh, becoming a member, just watching the show. It's all good. Even, you know, like... You know, news, uh, I don't know, like, Philly D covering is awesome. More people talking about is awesome. I'd love to see some traditional media people, uh, you know, talk about it. You know, Hollywood Reporter, is that that's a pretty big deal, at yeah. least within the entertainment No, industry. I agree. That's, that's, that's on the same level as Variety, like Hollywood Reporter and Variety are... are 100%, I agree. Big boys. That's huge. Yeah. It's huge. Um... But thank you guys. I love to see how y'all are so. Um, you guys are the best. I don't know what to say. It's it's awesome. It's overwhelming. It's beautiful. Thank you guys for your support on this. Because I'll tell you what. Last night, I was so I was fucking feeling bad. I was worried. I couldn't sleep. You know, and I just felt like sometimes it just feels like I'm alone in it. Like the last time, it was there were so many people involved that this time coming here and seeing more people and seeing all you guys supporting me the amount of support i saw on like when the third lawsuit was filed on the subreddit was like all about uh the the um the lawsuit and i was like it's so it's it, i felt much better this morning i feel much better this morning seeing all the support so thank you guys so much and also i feel better actually because i got real worried when i saw this lawyer they hired this guy and once I actually browsed the complaint, I still haven't read it, I felt a little better because I wasn't quite sure what they were going to have in there. But once I saw it was all about the Ponzi thing, I was like, right. I just read the article. Yeah. I don't know. It just seems like such a stretch, but we'll see. I don't know. This guy's merciless. He's aggressive. So it's going to be a fucking fight all the way to the end. This third one is going to be a scrap all the way to the end it's gonna be a shit show which fucking sucks but now, it is what it is family 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 relatively soon regardless of what happens with this third right like, so that, today actually anything? the judge is going to rule on the pseudo defamation uh tortious interference one the, se the second one that yeah. was number two yeah. right so she she's set to rule on that today oh interesting which i'm feeling very hopeful for the copyright one i'm feeling very hopeful for but it got delayed the hearing got delayed until like uh sometime next year early next year right like February or something. So we won't hear anything from that one for a few months. But if we take the dub today on that one, it's going to give us a lot of momentum, I feel like. Sure. So, fingers crossed. I'm feeling hopeful. I feel like, you know, we did great motions and pleadings. My lawyers did a great job. I feel like the law, the facts, the whole damn thing's on our side. And um, the, lo the judge seems really smart and intuitive and her comments so far have been really good, so. <clears throat> we'll know on Friday, actually, if we're going to take the dub on that one. Cool. 
family. I love you guys so much. And thank you to all. I mean, this, you know, it just means the world that I've actually got um, <laughs> people saying class action against Ryan from the H3 family. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he has defamed you guys. He's called you guys bots. Yeah. Class action lawsuit from H3 family. Which is honest, it's so insulting to love to use that as a, uh, in a disparaging way, that slur. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about being profiled like that, Lovebot? I mean, I haven't done anything to Ryan Kavanaugh other, other you know, than just existing. So I don't know why you gotta, gotta yeah. do me like that. That's fucked. So I'm not feeling very good about that. Yeah, I don't blame you. It's like, you know, what's next? You're gonna throw you in camps and shit. Yeah. I mean, I did, I did do that Sugma dick joke on him. Oh, you but, think he's still holding uh, a grudge oh, for the Sugma? He did Sugma. get him pretty good. Yeah. He did end up blocking me too. So. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't fuck with him on social media. I reject that, love. Yeah, I said sorry to him afterwards. Yeah. Don't do that. Nobody fuck with Ryan on social media. That's against... No. Oh, so Cam said he blocked me. And all I said was, check for corn. What does that mean, check for corn? He's just referencing Zach's uh, little poop meme. Oh. My, my thirst trap TikTok when we were doing Wait, the... he's familiar with the check for corn meme? Like, how could he know? I don't know. Hmm. Don't do that, Cameron. <laughs> don't leave comments on his social media. He can't I'm now, he's blocked. You know. Not to mention, this is... Emotional harmful as a viewer is hurting me. We should sue. This isn't okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is, man. I was so, me. I was so stressed, bro, and I was like trying not to stress Ela out. She's massive. She can barely walk at this point. You know. Well, she's got a lot of back pain from the pregnancy. Right. That's why we got the bed out for her. <laughs> right. And I just I don't want to stress her out with this stuff, but I didn't want to lead on how stressed I was yesterday. I was I couldn't sleep. I was just thinking. Like, fuck. I was thinking, like, man, my, the darkest thoughts I had last night was, like, did I fuck, you know, did I take this too far? Did I fuck this up? Should I just pay them the hundred thousand or the mi well, million? Apparently. Not went, a million. <laughs> yeah. Should I just pay, offer more money to them to make this go away? Or the darkest thought is, like, are they going to win and take everything I have? Am I going to lose my house? You know, because I was reading about this this lawyer. And they're like, he won law, uh, defamation lawsuits with, and won $10 million verdicts and shit like that. So I was like, okay, well, if I lose, am I going to lose every, like, am I going to fucking have to sell my house and, like, pay them? So those were my darkest thoughts, and that's just being real. That's what I'm worried about. Well, you can't take your family. They can never take my family. 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 You know what we're going to all go Family. 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 Say it, Dan. Family. Say it, Dan. All right, Family. 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 Thank Family. He's going to be like, he's going to clip this and be like, they're part of a cult. What were you saying, Dan? That we could all move to Rio and, you know, start doing high stakes heists of banks and shit. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Have The Rock chase us, try and hunt us down, but we're always one step ahead. I'm reading all the comments, guys. Cap Cap needs to be careful with frivolous lawsuits. A judge could restrict his right to sue in future potential lawsuits. Yeah, I mean, I don't know anything about that. It sound. Oh, God, the families are going crazy in the chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we all family, dog. <laughs> um, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, you would think that there would be more repercussions for misusing the legal system like this, but I don't, I'm not super familiar with, but I know like the Church of Scientology sues people for no reason like 50 times and drowns them, so I'm, I'm just not familiar with the, with the law. But um, that's it, eh? That's it. Yeah, so family, speaking of family, right. is being moved to next week. Next week. Recorded on Wednesday for the off the rails slot for the week. And then tomorrow we're doing it's then it's a normal week other than that. Yeah. 
But we're coming leftovers to tomorrow. Yeah. Off, or not off the rails, uh, after dark on Friday. <laughs> the chat is going so fast with families. I'm trying to read comments. <laughs> <laughs> Look what we started. I love how it keeps going on about you paying bots, but in reality, we are paying you just to support and watch, here to support the fund as well. Thank you, Marina. I don't know what a CHF is, but it's 55. Shake in something, maybe? Family. Cav Cav. Um, is a Swiss franc. Hmm. A Swiss franc. Mm -hmm. Huh. 54 US. Thank you so much. Switzerland. Uh, I'm trying to catch the comments, but they're going so fast. Cat's cat just mad because he's not part of the family. <laughs> True. Facts. All facts. All right, well, I got to go um, rest my voice, check on Ela. Oh. <sighs> Yeah, it's stressful. I, I didn't expect it to hit me as hard as it did. Because, like, these previous two, I was, like, pretty, like, we're going to do this. We're going to beat this. It's going to mm -hmm. be fine. I think it was the fact that he hired this lawyer that, like, freaked me out. Oh, definitely. And I was reading about him and all the And I was like, oh, fuck. You know. Fun. But there ain't no turning back now. Here we go. Family. Oh, the battery died. It was on this whole time. Oh no, it's still on. Family. 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 Wait, wait, hold on. Family. Oh. Family. 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 Oh no, Dan is transforming to Vin Diesel. Family. 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 Family, 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 family,